I'm, I'm kidding completely. I don't know if we should. I don't know if we should talk about that live on an episode. Well, Welcome <laughs> live. Good morning, guys. How you doing? <laughs> That's what we should have done for for Valentine's Day. We should have done oh, a show. We should we have. We should have. All right, put that on the calendar for next maybe year. Maybe April Fool's put, topic. Put, now, guys, we're live, and I'm not going to tell the people watching right now what we're discussing. We'll have a fun oh, little topic for. We're, for we're planning for shows second. out for a year. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. All right, guys. So it is Caliber Corner number 33. We are going to talk about range box essentials and our favorite range day accessories. So those of you that are watching this live, whether you're on the gun channel side or over there on the YouTube side, uh, feel free to just chime in with those things that you like to take with you to the range uh those different items that you absolutely have to have make some recommendations i've got my range box sitting right here next to me and we'll kind of i'll go through some stuff and show some stuff off as we talk about it or and you can criticize my collection of range gear and so on uh before we do any of that let's just give a little recognition to those out there watching right now we will start over on the newly polished gunchannels.com website side we have got uh, Nice Strike was here earlier. He does have some obligations today, so he won't be joining us. Midnight Range TM said he's going to be busy, but he did give us a cool recommendation for some gear. Uh, we got Paper Plane Crash out there on the Gun Channel side. Patrick is out there this morning. Uh, let's see, Jim is there, and Jim is here. Jim is everywhere. And over on the YouTube side, man, we got a crowd chatting already. All right, so Midnight Range was the first guy to check in, of course, because he's busy cooking up breakfast for the day right now. Uh, taking care of the masses. Uh, Scott Pacini's out there. Jonathan Khalif is out there. A caliph. I uh, apologize if I butchered the names, guys. Doug D is with us. Good morning, Doug. Grim 90s hanging out. We got people joining in right now. So, you know, range day is always a lot of fun. I don't know about you guys, but I tend to take a lot more gear than I need. And a lot of the range gear that we take is is because of lessons that, that we learned from stuff that we needed with us at the time at the range. We didn't have it and might have made the range day a little bit shorter. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and let everybody introduce themselves. Uh, because age starts uh, continues with wisdom, we're going to go ahead and start off with my right. Squibby, what do you know, man? What's going down? Oh, hey everybody. Good morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is this is a good topic because we do learn through trial and error. We do learn from networking with with other uh, people who like to go to the range and shoot. And um, I think we all end up at some point carrying so much gear. We wish we had a cart or a wagon. Yeah, I'm 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 at least three to four trips out to my car just to do. I mean, when I film a video, I've got to take all my camera equipment, all that other fun stuff with me, too. And there's just lots of stuff that goes with you, man. It's crazy. Uh, Squib, you got anything you want to plug right now? Any shows that you're doing? Any any programs on GunChannels.com that we should be checking out? Yeah, I'd like to plug Caliber Corner on Saturday morning. Oh, wait. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> lock and load Mondays, <laughs> uh, 8 Eastern. Uh, you got a choice between us or the Tactical Leprechaun, Clover Tech. His show's Ooh. at 8 Eastern as well. Flip so, the coin yeah. on that one. Flip a coin uh, no, one. no, no. Everybody goes over there. We got like zero viewers. <laughs> oh, no. man. No. You know, hey, oh, no. we can always, always go back and watch them. They get loaded over on the YouTube side, right? I mean, obviously, yeah, they, they're they there. Do. They do. Yeah, yeah so you they can do. Check them but out. yeah, if you want to talk about volcanoes and bitcoins and karambits and tavors and, um, and how the economy is collapsing, even though it's not, or how the, the, <laughs> the stuff's going to hit the fan and whatever, then yeah, tune in. If not, go over to Clover's show. Well, I, and I appreciate it. I was, was that the show that I was on last week? You guys invited me over to talk about uh, school yeah. safety and arming the teachers? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, Hawaii um, Volcano was... Squad's been doing lock and load since forever. He's been on gun channels for a real long time, and uh, yeah. he's had to change the schedule of the show uh, because of different things going on in his life. But uh, right now we're doing it Mondays at 8, and that's mostly because that's when my lunch break is – or that's the best time for me to take a lunch break on second shift at work. Otherwise, he was doing it what were we, 11 o'clock at night or something. It was late. But, see, he's six hours behind in Hawaii. See, I was so. kind of curious what time is it. You know, that'd be like 2 o'clock in the afternoon for him, and it's 8 o'clock for Pacific or 8 o'clock oh, for Oh, yeah, Central. yeah, yeah. He would, yeah. He, he, he would come on the show and complain about having to leave the pool early. Oh. So and I told him that. that I was going to go outside and use a snowblower for four hours, and I had to get going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, was, he was sending a text. He didn't know that sometimes snow doesn't stick to the ground because the ground's warmer and stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It usually turns into ice when it uh, cools down in the afternoon and the evening. So, yeah, a lot of fun. Hey, I'm, I'm just real curious. You said talk about karambits and talk about bitcoins. But what if we combine the two and invent, invent a whole new currency, the karambitcoin? Karambitcoin. I would, I would I like that. that. The, the karam I, I might try to bring that one up. <laughs> Karambit coin, it, uh, 
it's a it's 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 a finance form of finance that can be used for self defense or something. Is that how that works out? I don't know. Is it? Yeah, you can only buy <laughs> edge weapons with it. Used for firearms yeah. and knives. It's it's a defense fund. Right on, man. Cool, cool. All right, moving on. Sand Hill Shooter, what is up, bro? How you doing? Good morning. Thanks for the invite. Yes, I yes am it is. about about to walk in the door to my workplace, so I yeah. will hang with you as long as I can, like normal. Cool. Sounds good, man. Appreciate you joining us. And uh, awesome that you got that, that you're with us here today. So I'm still waking up. My bad. I'm a little slow this morning. Uh, Jim, what's going on? Coming to us from the marvelous state of Texas. What do you know, buddy? The wet, soggy state of Texas. Oh, it's my favorite time, man. I love it when you got that like you got that fall rain and you got that spring rain starting to come in and you got that. Oh, man, that's awesome. I, anything that's not snow, I'm cool with. So, yeah. Ah, but I'm seriously jonesing for some range time. I know. I hear you, man. I want to go out there and it's such a, it's such a mess right now. I guys, I'm just gonna tell you, I won't have any range videos up for a couple days because it's like just getting out there. I mean, I'm fine in the Jeep, but it's, it's not fun going out and it's hard to walk around the range safely, you know, cause there's stuff all over the place and mud and muck. And yeah, I hear you, man, this, this spring, I'm going to be hitting the range hard. It's going to be bad. I'm going to be See, was, some late evening. So I was thinking about skipping it tomorrow, but now you guys have got me getting itchy. Ugh. I'm, I was going to go today, but we got to sit around and get our taxes done. So that's going to take my uh, my time out for that. And then tomorrow I got some vehicle maintenance I need to do. So it's like, God, I'm not going to get out till this week. But it's freezing outside and it's icy and kind of deadly. Sandhills, is that the view out your front door? You guys got some snow last night or what? That's the back door of my workplace. It is trying to snow on us right now. We're supposed to get like half a foot. But oh, yeah. it's going to have yeah. to get with the program if I'm getting half a foot today. Cause yeah, they were saying three I've got six. Yeah. Well, I've got just enough right now to make the ground white. Most of it was melted off yeah. the, uh, the pavement and the concrete as of last night. But, uh, yeah, it's trying to come down again, so we'll see what happens. I've got some co-workers out traveling about uh, an hour and 20 minutes from the store today at a, at a home show. So hopefully it doesn't do it too much and they can get back on, on time. Okay? Be safe, man. If anybody Don't ever send wants that to this move, way. Move, Don't send that? it here. <laughs> Don't you have enough of that where you are? Yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, yeah, it's melting. Yeah, I'm melting, melting. <laughs> what a world. Ah, uh, geez. And speaking of smelt <laughs> smelting, speaking of smelting, AWAG, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hiya. I'm doing okay. It's pretty cold out here. It looks like All right. rain. Thanks yeah, man. Rain, yeah, man. What is that comment going on? Travis's love child is here. First of all, there's a 1% chance that Crackle P11 Jr. is not my boy. I've been saying that for months now, and nobody seems to be as – Maury Povich told me Crackle P11 is not my child. I just want to get that out right now. So, I don't know. I must have missed a uh, a comment. There he is. All right. Ben is in sure. the house. Ben is joining us. Uh, what are you saying? That Billy Jean is not your lover? Exactly. <laughs> That's hey, what I was thinking. It ain't my boy. It's like I said, one percent chance it ain't my kid. So um, anyway, all right. So let, I got to quit looking at the comments. I'm gonna go, let's go. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's just uh, let's jump into it real quick here. Uh, okay, so we're talking about range box essentials. Obviously, we got to get our stuff to the range. So let's start off with what do you guys use to haul your stuff to the range? What is your your preference? Everybody's kind of particular about what they take and how they take it. You guys fire away. Feel free to just chime in and say whatever you want. I carry my stuff in a duffel bag, mostly okay. that double. It, 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 my range bag is a duffel bag. It's got okay. uh, a main compartment, then a zippered compartment on either end, and then a side compartment. And oh, and everybody's gone. Movie. And he's We're gone. Up. Okay. I'm, here. I'm still here. All right. All right, so AWAG, you want to chime in? What do you take to the range? Squibby will be back in a second here. He's on his mobile, and he's uh, out of the house right now. He's actually in a structure. So um, AWAG, what do you think, man? Um, I usually try to bring more than one magazine, obviously, because magazines are important for the function of your firearm. And now if you have a gun that has an internal magazine, bring an extra magazine just in case. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> bring, bring an extra clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. bring a stripper clips too if you have. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Fed firearm, but um, got it. <laughs> I I learned this the hard way by um, I had just bought uh, my Bushmaster ACR. I go to the range. I think I have magazines out the wazoo in my backpack. Here the night before, I dumped out my backpack cleaning it out because there was dust in it. I forgot to load the magazines back up. I went all the way to the range. I got there, and I didn't have magazines. Yeah, that's oh. got to got to check your inventory before you go. That's a big mistake that I've made too. Even just little things like, oh, I don't know, ammo. You get halfway out there and you're like, are you kidding me? You know. 
Yeah. And bring a unjamming rod because mm -hmm. this happened to me. Mm -hmm. Um is I just got done building the AK74. I went to the range the day of. I got out there. I shot a few rounds and then that bullet got stuck in the chamber area. Yeah. And I didn't have an unjamming rod, and so I had to go home that day. Which was yeah, really, um, really upsetting. Just go to well, you guys are out looking for one of those when you're in the, the hunting section or the accessory section at your local Walmart or sporting goods store. Just get yourself a single piece single piece cleaning rod. And I have one that's kind of a sacrificial lamb that's gotten bent, you know, using it to, to tap out a shell or two from that got stuck in my uh, my AR. Um but that's definitely an essential because that can really put a crimper on your day because it you can't if you can't get it out you don't have anything to get down there that's going to work you're trying to find something that'll go down the barrel that you can use to tap the shell out and you're sitting there trying to grind it out with your pocket knife or your pocket tool and you know it just doesn't yeah i'd say that's definitely a first essential get yourself a good bag some sort of a bag or a case and uh you know definitely uh, get yourself the single piece cleaning rod i want to share do a quick screen share with you here this is what I haul my gear to the uh, to the range, and you guys can can again feel free to chime in. Uh, this is the uh, MTM case guard. My wife actually got me one of these on Valentine's Day, like probably seven or eight years ago. And you get the stand, which also has a cover that goes over it, and uh, you can rest your guns in it. You can use it to sight your guns in. You have an adjustable uh, peg up here in the front that'll let you change your your angle. So when you're shooting, you can, you can actually, now you can't strap the gun down when you're shooting it, but it'll hold most guns in place for what you do. And the case itself is is a really, I've got it sitting next to me right now. It's actually a pretty good size. Um, and I, I have all my gear, all my essentials, and basically everything short of the guns and the ammunition themselves. So definitely look into one of those. They're 70 bucks, but man, I've beaten the heck out of mine and it has just held up like a champ. And so that's something that I definitely recommend. Um, what else, guys? Go ahead and throw it out there. What else do you like to take out with you? AWAG, any uh, vital accessory? AWAG is gone. Uh -oh. I think I think the NSA is getting us. I, I, they don't. Just, and we're not we're even we're not even talking about guns. That's the sad part is we're just talking about stuff we use to get to the range and survive an hour session. You know, it's on, I mean five. Ooh. Uh, on that stand, at the range. Travis. Drive at the range. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have an issue with normal size magazines? Mm -hmm. uh, because when we use, we've got the same yeah. one and I use it at home for cleaning and gunsmithing type mm -hmm. stuff, as well as we've taken yep. it to the range off and on. And, uh, we can't use a, a standard 30 round, yep. uh, same on an thing. AR or AK with that. We've got to use the, the five round hunting mags or whatnot, because it's, it's, uh, which is fine at our range. We, we can only load six at a time anyhow, so it doesn't matter to us. Yeah, yeah. But but you got to spend more because, you know, less capacity, you charge more for the magazine. How is that? I don't know. Anyhow, you got to buy more expensive mags in order to use it with some uh, well, some some rifles. Depends on what you're I, shooting. I mean, you can get your 10-round or your 20-round P mags for twelve ninety nine. That's usually what I do. Honestly, I don't use that anymore to do my, as of about a, a year or two ago, I've got my lead sled that I use and the okay. model of lead sled that I have. I can't remember the company that made it, but it's the green lead sled. You see them everywhere. Um, it has a bar that bends around the side. So it does allow the magazine to clear. So you can have a, a your AK or 30 round, not a 40 okay. round P mag, but a 30 will be fine. Um, okay. And you know, that's, that's what I use for anything like that. This, I, one, there was one range test I did and I regretted not grabbing my lead sled. I totally forgot. I had the, um, Ruger precision rifle and I had to use my, my case and it works because that has a, like a little 10 round box magazine that was on it. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where you cannot use the 30 round mag with the side and clean traditional rifles, not a problem. Some of your 22s would probably work here. I don't know the BX, what are the BX 35s, 25s? What do we call those that go with the Ruger uh, 1022? Yeah. On the, on the 1022, we got to use the 10 round rotary magazine yeah. that like yeah. that comes with it to use that stand. Yeah. But then, uh, uh, yeah, we use the, the BX 25s. Uh, well, pretty much only when we go to your range. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, there you go. Have fun. Man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I saw uh, now with that memorable words from your son, uh, squib dad, can I do another, what do you say? Can I do another, uh, mag, mag dump? <laughs> yeah, son, go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Cause we can't between, uh, between using the, the sight and clean stand, or we've got a bag, we've got a leather bag with uh, plastic, uh, pellets inside of it for resting Be between between the, uh, those two you just cannot put something that is is not low profile on on the rifle and use it when you're at a, at a bench 
Now, on that lead sled, does that come with a case or a bag or something that you can carry it in? Or do no, you, you, you just, just got to lug it with you, but it's durable as heck. I just throw it in the back of my vehicle on top of everything. I do have the 30-pound bag of lead shot with a special carry bag that that goes in. You have to buy that separate. It is an expensive investment. That lead sled is like $80, I think is what I paid for it from Cabela's. And then the uh, the bag that you put the lead shot in is like 12 bucks. Now, you could use sand if you want to, but I just was lazy about it. I just bought the bag of shotgun shot because I had it right there at Cabela's in like a canvas bag. You put that mm -hmm. in the carry bag that has a little handle on it, and that's what he used to weigh down the lead sled. So that's one of those things that's, okay. you know, is definitely. That the, is that the lead sled solo? Is that what they call that? Yep, yep. I use that, the lead. Yeah, that one does a lot. That's the one I have. Yeah, yeah. From Caldwell. That thing is Caldwell. a beast. It's, if, if you're not shooting a very heavy uh, or very high powered caliber rifle, you don't even need that shot bag. I mean, it's just nice as a rest. Mine, and it's, mine bumps. it's not a lot of weight to it constantly move, So that's why I ended up getting the bag to keep it way down. Maybe it's just the surface that I was shooting on because the sled, the lead sled would move after every shot, just enough that I'd have to kind of recenter myself or recalibrate it. Although I try to adjust the ramp angle on this stuff. I've, um, I've, only, but, I've only used it on my 243, and yeah, it, oh. it'll jump back every shot. Yeah. But I mean, you it's got that spring. So. I'm I'm not using it for for you know to soak up recoil anyway on that, but yeah, yeah it'll it'll jump back every time. But then um, I'm not trying to ring out you know minute of angle or sub MOA accuracy. I'm I'm ringing out minute of deer accuracy oh, with yeah. my rifle. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it yeah. does everything I need. I really like the fact that compared to you know my old rest, which was just throwing my my coat on top of a backpack. Um, <laughs> This is way more stable, and once you get that thing kind of locked in there, um, as far as as left and right, you don't get a lot of play. But then with that little uh, that little hand turret, you can you can adjust your elevation. So if you can get everything lined up left and right, then you can fine tune your elevation adjustment and put that crosshair, you know, right on where you're aiming, and and just leave it there. And I do like that part. Yeah. There now. With the Good. with the with the sight and clean, even though you can take it apart and fold it down, and it's mm -hmm. lightweight, it does take up half the room in my bag. So when we have taken it, uh, I'll put it in the bottom of the bag, and it'll just you know fill the whole whole thing there, and I'll just sure. stack things on top of it. But I found that uh, if we want something to use as a rest, uh, I got my son a leather bag, and and I just. Uh, filled it with plastic pellets instead of sand or anything. At our range, they will let you use sandbags for free, but these are canvas sandbags. They spill everywhere, that sort of thing. A lot of people bring them and they they leave they spill sand all over the station. So you got to clean that off before you put all your gear on there, you know. Uh, or or there's just sand everywhere, and you know how it is getting sand in the action of a firearm. It's not a good thing. Oh, yeah. No, so no. for us. For us, you know, it's kind of like, okay, we always keep the, the leather bag in, in the range bag. And if we need a rest, there's our quick rest. It's not perfect. You know, we could probably use a second one or something like that. Or, or there, there, I mean, if I had my own, own range in the backyard, I, I would definitely have a, a lot better stuff as far as using as a rest. But in, in a pinch, the sandbag will work, but you just, you run that risk of, of, uh, of just introducing more more stuff that'll that'll foul up and 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 scratch up your your firearm. So it's 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 good to have something you can use it as a rest when you when you're uh, taking gear to the range. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um. Do you so you don't you don't have the actual box though that the that the sight and clean sits in. You don't have the carry box for it, or or you do. Uh. Then well, you when you you the carry box isn't it just kind of like putting the lid on the top. You take the two upright pieces and fold or you take them out and just lay them in there and then you. Yeah, you set the you set yeah. the actual here. I'll show you. You actually take the the sight and clean itself, like the rest. Use this. Yeah, just like that. You can yeah. set that in the box. But the nice thing is, half of this sticks up into the lid. So when the lid when the lid closes, you still have about six inches of depth underneath of it uh, to put stuff in. And that definitely, I mean, I've got well, a full cleaning case in here. I've got the stands. I've got a full. You know, I've got my 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 CLP bags and or my CLP can, and I've got my patches and, and punches and everything in there there's plenty of room underneath of it to haul whatever you want the case well, the is center probably compartment about, yeah. the center compartment in my range bag is the uh kind perimeter of the whatever the, yeah. The, yeah. The, the size of that if you said sure. that you can squeeze that in the bottom and now the bag is rigid yeah so uh, uh it's it's not that uh it's um it's not a good idea to take it's just it's not as portable at, for me as a bag but 
you know, the lead sled would just be way too too heavy. That would be something where I, I'd want to have, you know, have my own own range in the backyard. But you know, your situation, you've got a pretty good where you can uh, back the jeep right up to it, pop the hatch, and and carry the stuff out. I mean, yeah, I'd love to have that. Uh, well, I, I don't usually do it if there's people there, but when I go, there typically isn't. Or you can pull up on somebody as long as when they're done shooting, you can roll up and get your stuff unloaded, and then back your vehicle out. You know, whether you're going to the pistol range, the carbine range. So, yeah, I know I've actually filmed out of the back of it before while filming in the rain. <laughs> nice. Um, just nice. a couple comments showing up on the Gun Channel side. Uh, Patrick was saying, for a rest, I use a bipod and old socks filled with airsoft BBs. Okay, not a bad idea. Ooh. Uh, that's that's definitely, you want some inexpensive options for some range gear because you can spend a lot of money on this stuff. I, mean, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, it blew my mind how expensive that bag of lead shot was. I was like, man, maybe I'll just go down by the river and fill up a canvas bag full of sand and then just put in this carry bag instead of dropping $30, you know, you can drop a lot of money on range accessories. Uh, we can also, Hey, also feel free to share any range accessories that just are not worth it. So a um, couple more comments popping up on gun channel side. Let's see, Patrick, I'm going to the range tomorrow. My new facts an 18 inch 223 wild barrel comes today. Sounds good. Um, there was a couple questions popping up here. Some people are saying they're having trouble finding my channel on the gun channel side. If you just go to browse channels, and just uh, scroll, eventually it pops up. Or if you just do a search under Caliber Corner, it will pop up. Um, and then over on the uh, the Gun Channel side, uh, Crackle P11 had a comment. And I want to address this. This is the second time he's put this question down. And this isn't range box related, but we can get through this one quickly. What are your thoughts on the Franklin Armory uh, reformation or reformation, uh, also known as the retardation is what people call it in the gun community, and the Decepticlock? Um, I think the Franklin Armory rifle is, it is a nice attempt at showing how ridiculous some of these laws are that we have with our rifles and the fact that you can get yourself technically an SBR without having to get the, the special license for it or the uh, stamp on it. I think it's cool. What I'm not cool with is the price. I'll tell you, Franklin Armory would sell these things for five or $600. Uh, I think people would buy them just to have one around or just to have one out of curiosity. If you're not familiar with the guys, it's basically uh, an SBR sized AR-15 with what a binary trigger system and straight rifling in the barrel. So if you use their special ammo, they talk about having a like a one MOA accuracy at 100 yards with their ammo. Um, otherwise, they I don't know if they guarantee any kind of accuracy would just. Um, I'm just checking out the comments here. I'm not sure if it if you have that kind of accuracy with uh, the standard ammo at you know 50 yards or less, but essentially the bullet starts to spin out of control. Essentially, uh, once you get past 75 to 100 yards, and it'll start to keyhole on the targets. Uh, Squib, do you have any thoughts on that, real quick? That Franklin Armory um, non SBR style rifle that they sell, gun that they sell, carbine. You know, my only thoughts on it are why, why? <laughs> just I mean, it's just another the, one of those things that just didn't need to be hole. made. Yeah, it's I mean, just to show that it can be, I mean, there's some things where there's a lot, there's some gun items out there that, that show up and, you know, it's just, it, it's just, just to try it, just to show it. But I mean, if they would sell them a lot cheaper, a lot of guys might have it because I might want that for a nice home defense weapon. If I'm not planning on going out into the open range to defend myself and I want a CQB gun, that's basically an SBR without the SBR, you know, legality involved in it or the cost or the time, um, why not? But at what twenty five hundred dollars or two thousand dollars, I just could not bring myself to buy one. Yeah, I'll just pay the tax stamp. Thank you. I mean, to be honest with you guys, I'll just stick with my AR pistol. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. To me, you're looking at basically the same link. Granted, you don't have the quick adjustability of the stock, but once you set up your uh, your brace to the link that you are comfortable shooting it with, uh, it should not be an issue. Uh, the other question that 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 Ben had out there was what the Deceptic Lock. What did I think about the Deceptic Lock? If you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's the uh, full conceal uh, M3D pistol. It's essentially a foldable Glock that has some mm -hmm. extra parts and components, so it'll go down to basically something the size of like a Pop Tart, more or less, and then it folds back up into place. Uh, what are your guys? What are your thoughts on that? We can discuss that while it, the question's posed out there. Okay, no, man, first of all, that is on a folding Glock. That is not the deceptive lock. That oh, it's is, not? Am I, tall? Am I no, off on that one? That, what is the deceptive lock? Maybe I'm totally missing that this is, one. Right? That, that should be called Glocktimus Prime. Ah, well, is it really worthy? I mean, it seems a little complicated and, and cumbersome, but um, I'm assuming that's what we're talking about is the full side, the foldable Glock. I don't know if there was some other, you know. No, I was just saying that I, th I think the name should be changed. That's all. Gotcha, gotcha. Glocktimus Prime. Okay, any thoughts on that? Would you guys ever buy something like that? We're looking at an MSRP of thirteen ninety nine. If you want to buy the full on model, otherwise you can send yours in, and they will do the work for you for seven fifty, uh, seven hundred fifty dollars. I, 
I guess, I don't know, I, if you really think you need the full-size slide in your Uber concealed carry gun, I just don't see the point. I mean, I would just go with a, a Glock 43 for the matter if I want something. I don't know. I don't know. What are, you guys, what are your thoughts on that? Foldable Glock, is that something? Here, let me let me go into a screen share real quick, and we'll just show people what we're talking about. It's, it's kind of a neat trick, but I don't know that I'd spend that kind of money on it. I mean, to sit there yeah. in a panic situation and try to fumble with that thing and try, I mean, yeah, if you practice with it, you'd probably get good with it, but I see a lot of extra parts and components that can go wrong. I see some things here that could fail or just mm -hmm. something that's going to cost you that extra second or two that you need to prepare your defensive firearm. Maybe if somebody wants something compact for travel, I suppose, or you want to toss it in your glove box and lock it. I don't know. Um, you yeah, put that I mean, 33 it's round magazine on it. You, you got to give it, you got to give it some credit for the idea. I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's cool. All right. I, I like the fact that they have an Uber considerable, you know, Glock, but I just, I need to quit saying Uber, but anyway, I don't know. I just, Get it out there for you guys real quick to look at and see what you think. So. The uh, the Transformers uh, jokes in the YouTube comment section is absolutely hilarious. Oh no, are people going off over there? I'm trying to keep up with everybody today. We got a lot of people watching here, man. Uh, what else? Do we have desk pop tart. <laughs> no Glocktron because negation turned it into a gun. Megatron auto Glocks roll out. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much it. Uh, ben, you are just boy. You're just wow. You're just being really. He's in rare really? form today. Wow, he is. He is. He's out there, man. He's just no, no filter, bud. All right, that's fine, man. All right, whatever. It's all good. Block target prime. prime. There you go. Yeah, like we... that, was lock. that was pretty cool. But now that I think uh... about it, it probably is a deceptive lock because Megatron, the original real Megatron, was a handgun. Yeah, what a P thirty eight, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so anyway, let's get back to the idea of the range box, all right? Uh, just kind of going through. You guys feel free to chime in whenever you want. I've always got a stripper clip with me in case I decide to grab the Mosin for fun just to get out there and kind of play around with it. Um, just some Sometimes you have to have the chamber flag going on. That's something else I like to have. Another essential. What's that? What's that, Wick? I I use zip ties as chamber flags sometimes. Okay, okay. Plus, uh, going from range to the automotive world and in between, zip ties are invaluable. They are very, very, very useful. For yeah, everything. keep them, keep them in your car. If you guys don't have any in like your prepper box or your uh, vehicle bug out box, just dozen cable ties. You'd be amazed what you can piece back together with just those. Uh, if it's you have like a bracket duct tape, that breaks, but stronger. Yeah, basically that's it. And you know, just something to snip off the end with, and you're good to go. I have a toolbox very... on my truck. It's got duct tape and zip ties in it. That's all you need, dude. I am the zip tie mechanic. <laughs> you can you can build a shelter with that, you know. <laughs> uh, a few other range box essentials. I have two front sight tools that I take with me all the time. This is a uh, Midwest Industries front sight tool for my AR because I have fixed front sights on all my on my uh, AR fifteens, and it's got two different sizes depending on what style of sight that you have. I had the UTG front sight tool, and it basically the prongs bent. The first or second time I used it, it was like seven or eight bucks. This one was maybe nine ninety nine, and I mean it's it's this sucker has got some weight to it. I mean it's it's got a nice it's a nice heavy duty steel, almost feels like it's forged or something. So get yourself a good sight tool if you're a, an AR guy. And then this is a this is I believe a UTG front sight tool for the uh, AK forty seven. Yeah, yeah, I got the new one that's um that's actually a yeah. piece of forged steel, and that thing is incredible. Yeah, these these are you definitely want to make sure you got your front your front side tool because nothing's more frustrating than trying to you know sit there and side in your firearm. I do have a, a forged uh, or just a nice steel front side tool that I use with my my Mosin. Hey guys, kind of keep an eye on the comments if you can because I'm going to be going through some stuff here and I don't want to miss anybody's comments if people are saying anything on the gun channel side or the YouTube side. Um, a few more essentials. I like to have a uh, polished cloth to polish the lenses on my optics and I put it in a baggie to keep the oil off of it. So these are kind of nice to have if you've got dirty optic glass and you need to keep that clean. Uh, okay, what about spare parts? You guys keep any? What do you keep for spare parts in your box? Because uh, I've got, I try I've to got keep, a bunch. Yeah, uh, I try to keep an extra firing pin for the AR. The AKs I don't care that much because yeah. the, all my actually I do this beforehand is when I build something uh, like an AR or an AK, I always replace the firing pin with either a stainless steel firing pin or a titanium oh. one. Yeah, you always I mentioned to going to the titanium route. Yeah. I always try to opt for the titanium if I can. Okay, okay. Because cool. it's it's lighter. It's it's much lighter, even though it's not that much of a difference. But to me, ounces are pounds, pounds are pain. Uh, titanium also doesn't um, break as easily as um stainless steel or 
just regular tool steel. Okay. So what are those running wag? I'm kind of curious because I think I paid maybe seven or eight dollars for my firing pin from PSA that I bought here, my spare. Well, uh, the titanium ones I get off firingpins.com, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And the titanium ones run about 20 to 30 bucks. They're a little okay. on the expensive side, but they're, they're going to last you the whole life cycle of the rifle. Okay. Okay, cool. Now, um, something I want to show here, this is something that Midnight Range uh, sent me a link to this morning because he, you know, he didn't know if he'd be able to join us today. Let's do another screen share here with you guys. Um, this is, I've never seen this before. I mean, maybe I'm pretty ignorant on tools, but the UTG 762 by 39 broken shell extractor for seven bucks. This thing is pretty cool. Yeah. I've never, I've had, I've had rifles literally on steel case ammo. I've had the extractor rip the bottom off the shell before. I've had that happen a couple times with Tula. And I've so, had that happen in my AR with brass cased ammo so yeah those i mean you got an aggressive extractor and an ejector and yeah man it just look at that so this is cool for seven bucks i'd consider buying one just to keep one around now granted you know i've got my little rod to tap it out but you might not be able to get enough grip with that that one piece rod to actually tap the shell out so if you're somebody that's a heavy uh ak shooter you might want to consider picking up one of those that's 6.95 with free shipping um they're probably going to be sold out after today's show so basically what it is it kind of looks like a little bit of a it's like a it's a rod here and it goes down the bullet and it opens up and, and it allows you to grip and pull back and remove your, your broken case. So that's, I thought that was kind of cool because I might be something just, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Uh, it doesn't take up a lot of room. So just kind of an option that's out there, but that was for midnight range. He shared that one with me. And uh, I think he had said he had mentioned it in one of his uh, shows before uh, real quick. Vandalistica vlogs is joining us from Australia. Uh, good morning, uh, Vandal. I think it's what one 30 in the morning, uh, Sunday morning for you right now, maybe. So good there we morning. go. Maybe. Oh, okay. Midnight range. Good, good idea. He says he keeps his in the grip. I'm assuming you're talking about the shell extractor. If you got one of the Magpul grips or any, any pistol grip that's got a compartment in it, um, yeah, he said he showed his off a few weeks ago on a show. So, and that's, you know, not midnight range. Just you can chime in on the comments here. Have you actually used it? Have you actually tried it yet? I was kind of curious. And uh, Vandal saying it is 1235 AM. So good morning, 50 caliber karma. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, okay, a few more pieces, parts. Any other parts that you guys take with you in your range bag? I keep, uh, I've got this little compact, it's not really a part, but I mean, I have the sight tool you mentioned and mm -hmm. for the, for the AR, the AK and I'm looking, I'm digging around right now. There it is. I wish I had a webcam. It's the little compact cleaning kit for the, the AK. Okay. I'll just throw that in the bottom of my range bag. Okay. Oh yeah. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get into cleaning supplies. That's another one. Um, I also, I just have a bunch of just spare parts, any projects I've done where I've swapped out parts on my AR, everything goes into little baggies. So I've got some extra pins for the, um, firing pin that go into the bolt carrier group. I've got the little handle and the pin and the spring that go into your charging handle in case one of those would ever break or snap, uh, extra castle nuts. When I converted my AR pistol from the uh, PSA buffer tube to the CAC shockwave tube, they don't tell you this. It, the PSA ones screw on and they keep the back of the receiver plate pressed up against the back of the receiver. When you get the CAC buffer tube to put your shockwave blade on, that tube has no, there's no, it's not thick enough to cover the back plate. So you end up having to get a castle nut. So I ordered a pack of three uh, <laughs> overnight shipping so I could get my, my pistol build done. And so I have a couple spares floating around, not that I'll ever need an extra castle nut, but uh, I just kind of keep those handy in case I ever want one. Another good one. This is either, I believe this is UTG. Uh, just their armorer's wrench. This thing was like $9, I think. It was one of the least expensive ones you can buy. Uh, oh, Tapco. This is Tapco. I'm sorry. This is your AR-15 armorer's wrench. I mean, it's uh, just definitely it does not bend. I mean, this thing is pretty sturdy. Uh, comes in handy if you want to change out your buffer tubes or you need to remove your, your front uh, flash hider or your compensator and so on. So these are definitely nice to have. This does fits fine. It's on my case. Does that have the notch where you can actually fit the torque wrench in there if you want to torque it down to the uh no i don't believe so uh, you can make the call on that i don't think so i guess not yeah no no i i guess i haven't had to. i've just mainly used it to tighten castle nuts before and that's pretty much yeah, it there's supposed um, to be a torque there's supposed to be a, a specific torque uh rating for those but okay okay i i i I don't know. Okay. It seems unwieldy to, to fit a torque wrench into that and then grab yeah. those little bits and pieces of the castle nut with those teeth too. So yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Moving on here, I've got some choke tubes because I've got an over under for my wife's uh, Stoger Youth Condor. These are turkey chokes. Whenever she goes uh, turkey hunting, we put these in. I like to have them with because we'll get out to the range. It's like, oh crap, we forgot to change the choke tubes. And then uh, choke tube tool is definitely a good thing to have around. Always nice to have so you can get your choke tubes out because you know this is a, a Carlson's choke tube and you can use this on uh, 12 gauge. I don't think I can use this one on 410, but I do have a special tool that came with the Stoger Condor to take the choke tubes out on that. This is a 1220 gauge. This will take out both. If you want to loosen them up, it's kind of it just kind of sits in. That's why it's got the arch in it, so it'll adjust itself to fit. You guys do any shotgun, any shotgun accessories you take with you out in your range box at all, or? You guys that do any 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 shotgunning, any um, any uh, clay play, clay pigeon shooting or duck hunting or anything like that or goose hunting? Any accessories you guys take out there? When I leave the house, whatever choke is in it is for whatever I'm using that day. I, okay. I typically don't switch them out at the range. I, I I don't I don't take mate 35 out very often though. Yeah, yeah. Um, Scott made a comment. Yeah, the Tapco it's not a full armorer's wrench. It's not. It was just something I basically needed to get my. Uh, castling it off and it was inexpensive and I got it for two days they, on they Amazon. Two. So. Tapco oh, yeah. has yeah. two of them. Yeah. So. But I mean, at that point, if, if you're doing that much there, um, you're <laughs> you're kind of, you might be in a little bit of mechanical trouble. I mean, everybody has their, uh, their limits on, on what they're willing to do in the field versus at home. So, I mean, it's not bad to have. Yeah. Um, that, you know, the thing about that, and also if you have a staked castle nut, you shouldn't need that tool specifically. But with me, I was uh, changing out from a uh, commercial spec buffer tube to mill spec buffer tube. So that's why I needed to get that tool. So it was just something to get by. But you, yeah, you can get nice armor's wrenches. You can spend whatever you want. Well, the, uh, also, the, Tapco, yeah. the Tapco wrenches, they, they work. I, I've got both of them. They work. They're, I don't have an issue with them. Plus, they're American made. So, mm -hmm. hey, keep it here, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Um, always handy to have a couple small screwdrivers around for optics, for making optics adjustments and any anything you might need to screw into place, kind of depending on what you're doing. So a couple of just screwdrivers, I keep those around uh, for adjusting Allen wrenches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got those. Allen B Pro <laughs> wrenches. <laughs> yeah, these are not. I just grab whatever one I need to fit. I don't have these, you know, measured out or anything like that. But any Allen wrench that's ever come with any of my optics or any accessories, they go into this little baggie right here. I keep those handy. Uh, so I have them. Also, you know, if you've got some unusual guns, like we've got a Rossi Circuit Judge, which is basically a 410 45 long Colt carbine, it has some very specific parts that it uses. You have a certain choke tube you have to use if you're shooting shot versus shooting 45 long Colt. It has its own specific uh, choke uh, key. It actually has the plugs on it, so you can plug out a couple of the uh, cylinders if you need, like if you have a three shell limit on your gun and you can actually hunt with that Rossi Circuit Judge with the 410. Um, we keep those in there so we could put it in to plug it. So it, it keeps the gun at a, at a three shell limit. So you could actually hunt small upland, uh, game birds with it if you want to. Um, oh, another one too. Got to have the earplugs. I always keep these on standby. Cause sometimes I'll, I never forget the ear pro, but somebody else walks up and they want to watch or somebody's out there and somebody just I keep about 25 it. of those stuffed into a side pocket. <laughs> there you yeah, go. No kidding, yeah. Individual packs. Well, I have 25 of them just kind of loosely floating around the range box as we speak. So <laughs> cloths to clean some stuff off. So this is what's in the top layer of my box alone. And actually, I kind of like it because it weighs everything down. So it's just more weight if I ever have to use the uh, the sight and clean. And again, what's cool, you got this little cover on the rest. So these are, you know what, here's the deal, guys. If you don't have a lot of room, but you want a place where you can clean your gun, you want a place where you can store your gun accessories, and you want... Uh, a way to kind of keep it all in a unit you can take with you when you go to the range. These side and cleans are awesome because you can just use a card table to do your work on. And if you don't have a lot of space in your house or your apartment, um, you just put everything away when you're done and just grab the box and go. For the longest time, everything I needed basically fit in here. And then I had another bag for targets in your pro. And that's all it would take to the range. And so these little things, I mean, no, I know you're going to think like 70 bucks is kind of crazy for a, a range box or a range bag if you want that, you know, the whole unit. Otherwise, what did you guys pay for the the side and clean itself was it forty nine ninety nine or thirty nine ninety nine? Because I got mine together as one package deal. I can't remember what I paid yeah. for it, but it, yeah. it wasn't bad. Once again, like the, the Tapco wrenches, it's American made, so your money oh, staying yeah. here. These, these MTM and, boxes uh, are amazing. Yeah, yeah, they sell a lot of stuff. I, I use their uh, their cartridge boxes for my reloads, and uh, yeah. we've got another. It's a it's just a stand. It's kind of a triangular pyramid type oh, shape. No, 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 um, no, 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 uh stand that we use that they make and mm -hmm. uh trying to think if there's anything else i mean they make a lot of good quality products 
Oh yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I mean, you know, it, it just kind of depends. You know, some some products might work well with you, and other products may not. It just kind of depends on on your experience with that. Everybody kind of has different experiences with different parts, and you never know what's going to happen. A um, few people chiming in on the gun channel side. Gun oil, gun oils bring always bring gun oil. Got that down here. Like I said, we're now in the bottom layer of the range box that I take with me. Uh, spare bolt for ARs. Okay, yeah, have a complete bolt carrier group just sitting in there. Um, okay, question. Uh, Dano has a question. I wish. Tony here was was here to answer this one. So, um, Dano, we I did forward you back the response from Squib to kind of help you out there. Did you get into Did you get to the crimping only die for forty four mag and revolvers? So, Dano sent a question to me this morning. We can just get this out here. I know it's not range box related, but I like to answer questions. Um, in a forty four mag using lead die set for a revolver, do I need the fourth crimping die, or can I just use the three die set and seat and crimp in one step? I don't have an answer, but uh, Squib. I think the Lee three die set comes with a factory crimp die, but I'm not sure. My 44 Magnum is a Lyman set, but okay. uh, if if it's got three or four dies in there, you're gonna have a factory crimp die or a powder through die or something like that. So I would just look in the description to make sure if it yeah. says factory crimp die, then it's in there. So if I'm not, they sell them separately for about 20 bucks. I'm looking on Amazon. They have a Lee Precision 44 mag carbide, carbide, carbide uh, three die set, and then they have a four die set. Uh, and so the four, the deluxe carbide four die set is 39.23 to 131.97, depending on what caliber you need. And I was going to see if they actually mention. I'm sure in the description box they'll say what it comes with, but uh let's see here decapping units let's see bullet seating die carbide yes yeah, it's carbide factory crimp die and that's what you want you want the one that says factory carbide. crimp carbide. die yeah. then it already comes with it you don't have to buy it separately lee will include most of their stuff in their sets whether it's three two three or four dies but yeah. they also offer that you can buy them individually as replacements okay or if you wanted to supplement another brand uh, my my uh, three crimp dies for 44 Magnum and Special are Lee, but uh, the uh, the uh, uh, crap I can't even think of the 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 resizing die and all that other stuff is Lyman. So here's what it says: the three die set that you buy it, you get the powder. You get the set includes the powder through expanding die, the bullet seating die, and a carbide full length sizing die. That's all you need. Okay, so that that would answer the question. That's on the three die set. That's thirty three dollars and forty nine cents. So that's um, that's what, what I like about the Lees. What yeah. I like about the Lees is they come with the powder scoop. They come yeah. with reload data, yep. and yep. they're fairly user friendly compared to some of the other ones. However, everybody's got their preference. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other other Travis is chiming in on the gun channel side. I don't tote extra parts of the range. Well, Travis, here's my deal. It takes me about 15 minutes to get out to the range and it's not a big deal. But once I get out there and get everything out there, I hate to have to go back in and come back because it burns a half hour of my time. And a lot of the times I'm fighting against uh, daylight to try to get as much done as I can before the sun goes down. Now, granted, we do have a, a lit range for the carbines and the uh, uh, pistols. Okay, I can turn the lights on if I want to when I'm out there, but I just hate having to run back in. So that's why. I'm probably um, keeping, you know, um, taking more stuff with me to the range than I really need to. Um, okay, moving on here. And the the little stands that go on the top of that sight and clean, they sit right on top. They actually fit in the case, too. These come with your sight and clean. So we'll put these into place so that you can use your gun for cleaning. You can clean it or obviously sight it in. Um, patches, always essential, or some cut-up T-shirts. Uh, some swabs, cotton swabs are always a good idea to take with you to the range. Um, I've also got my punch set. Now, this is not a finishing punch set or a starter punch set. These are just your traditional, what, pin punches or just punches in general. These are always nice to have in case you need to do any kind of disassembly at the range or something you need to tap out. These are always nice to have. I get these at Harbor Freight for like six or seven bucks. I've got one set I've been using for about eight years now, and they really hold up well. Uh, you can take whatever gun cleaner you want. I keep CLP and uh, rim oil with me also. Absolutely, take rem yep. oil. Rem oil works on pretty much everything, and if you're you're it's it's running dry, you're having problems where you can just tell that it it needs uh, to be lubed or uh, it's just filthy. It, it it doesn't. It's not really a cleaner, but it seems to cut through filth in my experience. Yep. I have yep. a question about rem oil. Um, yeah. Does rem oil go bad? Because I have a, a it like changes a, color over time, but I yeah. I've got a, I've got an old can of it that a buddy of mine gave when he gave me a small box of range accessories when he 
uh, was not able to keep firearms anymore. And uh, it was the can was probably 10 or 12 years old and it, yeah. it worked fine. It seems like it did this. It didn't look like it had separated chemically. Um, it basically held up just like uh, it normally would. So no, I don't yeah, think so. Like the rim oil that I had, like I, I used it like two years ago. Yeah. And it was fine. And then I opened, cracked it open the other day when I was uh, oiling my AK, and yeah. it came out like this brown color, and it smelled horrible. It could, Kim. I mean, did you shake it before you sprayed it or not? No, it's it's one of the old ones that uh, it's actually a tin. It has yeah, like a little dispenser nozzle on it. Okay, okay. Uh, the but, propellant could start to could chemically start to become ineffective. Maybe and that could start to break down inside the can. It's it's not um, a propellant. It's it's like a straight up like a old style like it's like Zippo lighter oil. fluid. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's weird about that is it is made in Canada now too. I don't know if anybody it's been made in Canada for quite a while. So maybe they changed the formula. Maybe they had to change the formula from a, huh. a chemical perspective when they made it in another country. So maybe it was made in the USA back in the day and when they switched it's, it's, production it some the formula could have changed a little bit. I don't know. I don't use it for cleaning, and I don't use it for after I'm, I'm done cleaning when I oil it to put it away for next yeah. time I take it out. I use it in the field. So yeah. for me, it's it's your it's it's kind of like uh, using bars leak to fix your radiator till you get home. If for yep. me, it's it's a field lubricant. It's it's not a bench lubricant. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's uh, take a pause for a second here from the the range box discussion. Uh, Ben is out there, and he's got a question. What's a good first AR-15? I would say a good first AK-2, but those are illegal in the People's Republic of Maryland. So chime in, guys. What would you recommend as a good first AR-15? Let's just keep it Let's keep it at a real – now, Ben is a young person. He's a young man. Let's just let's just keep it at a, at a fair budget. Let's say sub $500. What would be a good recommendation for an AR-15? And you can do way better than, you know, than, than $500, but what would you guys recommend? What's a good first AR-15 for a person? Anderson or this. Eagle Arms. Okay. Or a PSA uh, kit yeah. that you just buy the lower receiver. You can get Anderson lower receivers for like 50 bucks. Okay, AWAG, I'm going to say no on that because you can get fully assembled lowers from PSA for 129 bucks. That's if really hard in to stock. Buy. Well, oh, I get them all the time, dude. I mean, not the, the Magpul ones pop up for 139 uh, they like right now is a bad time to be looking on PSA because people are going nuts buying stuff left and right. Like I'd mentioned in the comments earlier on the gun channel side, there's uh, five, five day shipping delays at PSA now and they're selling out of everything, but I've never had trouble when I've needed to get, I'll wait till the weekly ads show up. And there's always going to be a complete lower that's going to show up usually with free shipping. Um, and for some States tax free. So the fact I can get up. Well, a, the, P the PSA you know, stuff isn't bad. I, I think yeah. it's all FN anyhow. And, and I, I've, I've used FN stuff for a long time and it works. Uh, but now here, okay, on the other end, if you want the experience of building an AR lower, which I'm currently doing right now, if you want the experience of doing it or you want to choose custom components, it's not a bad idea to uh, start off with a, a strip lower or an 80% lower and just and just go, people, go that route. Yeah. People knock Anderson because of the price. The only thing is they don't have to charge a higher price. It's anybody can make these things these uh, you know for for the lower priced ones they're they're mill spec mm -hmm. the patent expired a long time ago the government paid all the r&d on this stuff in the 50s yeah. so all they need is the material and a cnc and a way to 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 plate it phosphate finish whatever you want to call it and that when you mass produce you can afford to sell it for those prices so they're not cheap because they're made cheaply they're yeah. they're inexpensive because there's nothing to making these things in in mass. So now I'll just I'll just say right now I've been able to get a full PSA AR for basically three fifty nine delivered. Especially if you watch it like their uh, yeah their that's a good Memorial price. Day sales. I mean you can get especially if you're in a state that they don't require sales tax on internet orders. Um, so I mean but but now here's a couple of good recommendations. I had a DPMS Oracle for five or six well, four or five years and never had any problems with it uh the finish on the outside it doesn't seem as good or as mil spec as psa but my my dpms oracle was always a good go-to rifle granted you've got a um uh, you know you have a non uh not you haven't got a commercial buffer tube on it but it was a good gun you know and it was it was well, i paid a lot more for because i bought it two weeks before sandy hook and this was back in the day before you could get the 350 fifty dollar ar uh colt expanse is another option you've got your ruger uh, what five five six uh, AR that you can get? Those are usually what four fifty. Uh, get yourself an M and P. You're pretty much. I don't. 
I don't know if there's any, I would maybe stay away from some of the brands that you're not used to. I'm going to tell you right now, and some people can disagree with me. I did not have luck with my um, Radical Firearms pistol length upper. I was using an Anderson Bolt Carrier Group in it. It was just not a happy gun. And I, I've read some horror stories about Radical's uppers. Maybe they're good. Maybe people have had better luck with them. I know some guys on gunchannels.com have them and have not had any issues, but just stick with stick with a, a name brand you could trust, say, you know, Smith & Wesson or, you know, DPMS, which is not bad. Colt, um, uh, what else do we if have? He doesn't, if he doesn't have a lot Sig. of money and he's yeah. trying to get his first one, yeah. just hey, look in the sale paper and pick no up man. something on sale at Bass Pro. Yeah. Done. Yeah, you're always going to find. I mean, some of these places are advertising like a 299 uh, AR complete. You know, I mean, but now, well, like, complete yeah. it may not have sights. Yeah, it might be a flat top. Yeah. And that okay, that's the one thing I'll say about the DPMS Oracle, um, because it has a a low profile front front gas block. Front sights for that thing are a pain to source, and I ended up having to buy a set of Midwest Industries because they make a specific front sight made for low low profile front gas blocks, and so it had to be like an extra quarter inch taller than the regular flip-up sites and ended up costing me like $150 for the set of sites. Now they are awesome sites, but uh, the fact that I couldn't just get, you know, some, some, uh, you know, UTG flip-up front sites off, off Amazon for 20 bucks and bolt them on the front was kind of a pain. Now, if you're going to just go optics, maybe not an issue, but you cannot put a polymer uh, front sight on a, on a, on a, on a gas block. That's not, you know, if it's its own mini rail over the gas block or low profile gas block, you don't want to put polymer sights on that because they're probably going to melt or they're going to lose their uh, calibration due to the heat. So be careful if you go get the Oracle. I've always been a big, a big fan of the uh, fix, uh, fixed front um, A2 front sight. So that's the way that I would say go, but that's just me. Yeah, okay, I, I so agree. I'm going to have to hop out. I got to go yeah. to work. Okay, no problem, man. Thanks for joining in, dude. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you for the invite. Oh, my God. I got, I've been so busy looking Later, at all the right. chat. Look at this. Guys, we got Ellis joining us right now. You guys have probably been here for 15 minutes. John John Z is joining He's us right so. now. So let's let's give you guys uh, a little bit of, a little bit of time here. John Z or Ellis, any range day essentials, any range bag essentials? What do you guys want to say? And first of all, thank you for joining Again. me on early Saturday morning, man. Yeah. A gun. Well, yeah, guns and ammo aside, <laughs> what else do you need to survive the range trip? What else? What do you have to take with you if you go to the range or you just don't feel complete? Uh, a gun. Okay, and another <laughs> a gun. Gun, ammunition. Okay. A cleaning kit. All right. Yeah. Most people don't think about that. But yeah, I, take it. I, take it. Here you go. I have room in my, my cycling clean. box for the whole thing. I mean, I take this with me, so I have everything with me if I need it, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen many people go to ranges and they don't even bother to take you know a, a cleaning kit. You know something might go wrong. They'll take it. You might have to you know yeah clean your gun out a little bit and make sure you know then do some function checks. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, I do keep a little hammer. This is actually like a watch repairing tool, but you can actually tap in uh roll pins with this if you need to so this is kind of nice to have you have something you have to repair or something starts say my sky cpx2 starts popping out uh frame pins like it did all the time this is kind of nice to have to tap them back in and not actually damage the handgun or the firearm um i do have a little uh, multi-tool here this is made by real avid and this one's made for the ar it's got specific tools uh that have you know the sizes for uh, for, for the pins and for the screws and things like that. This was just like a little $12 tool that I got. And you can put your bits on the end here and use it as a wrench or a screwdriver. So these that are kind is, of... That is, that is actually cool, man. It's got the different size Allen wrenches with it. I got this at Shields on Black Friday for like eight ninety nine, and actually Have you came, not done a review on that shit? Uh, I showed it off, but I think I have 10 views on my channel for it. So I don't think it's very popular. And it has a choke tube for 10, 20... Uh, 410 gauge uh, shotguns. Do you want to take out your choke tubes? It's got your little blade here if you need to do any kind of cleaning. I don't know. I could do another review on it, I suppose. I, I did show it off, but I guess I didn't really get into much detail. Maybe I will because we're supposed to get a snowstorm today and I'm not going out to the range. So your little pin punch right here you can use. Yeah. And here's the cool part. You open this up. Look at that. You've got four little bits in there for the screwdriver that you can pop out. And those little bits go on the end here so it converts to either a wrench or a screwdriver depending on how you want to use it. So it's not, it's come in handy a couple times. There's been some times I've had to, oh, it's got a uh, um, Torx, uh, Torx head on it also, which is kind of nice too. So two different Torx sizes. So if you have some real funky screws that you got to deal with, this actually works really good. Oh, and it's got your windage elevation. It's got a little windage elevation screwdriver. It tells you that on the blade itself. 
So this is made by, this is just called the Real Avid Gun Tool, but it's uh, more specifically for the AR. And it actually came with a bore light, which I just keep sitting up on my table over here so I could look down the bore for obstructions yeah, that's or right. see how clean the barrel is. Bore light's another That's a good thing to have. That's a yep. good thing to have. Another thing is if, if you're not sure if you've got a squib uh, and it's it's lodged in a barrel, if you've got mm -hmm. that cleaning rod for, for unjamming something that got stuck in the chamber, you can also drop it down the barrel to make sure. If you don't have that there and, and you don't have a cleaning kit where you can assemble a rod or something like that and you're like, you think there might be an obstruction, you don't have a flashlight, you can't tell, drop a, a, a 22 case down the, the barrel if, it, if it's big enough. Mm -hmm. If it's big mm -hmm. enough. You can pick one of those up off the ground if you don't have one. Yeah. Uh, find something that you can run down that barrel before you say, well, I'll just fire another one. Yeah, you don't want to find out the hard way. Uh, quick comment mm -hmm. out there. Somebody said, what about Ballastol? I can't buy it anywhere. I can't find it in Nebraska. My life depended on it. Maybe hardware stores going to have it. I've yet to find it at Walmart. I've yet to find it in sporting goods stores. I don't even know if Cabela's carries it. They might. I've never actually used Ballastol before. So yeah, um, yeah. It, it's got a it's got an interesting smell. It works. It's kind of like I, I it's it's like if you mix rem oil with WD-40, that's Ballastol. Uh, it's not bad. Kind of uh, some people swear kind of by it. I, I ordered a can of it off of Amazon, I think, with some other stuff just to yeah. see what it was all about. I didn't think yeah. it was great. I didn't think it was terrible. It was, it was. Uh, I mean, it's 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 okay stuff. I, I I wouldn't knock somebody for having it. I mean, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, you can get it in a small aerosol can and and uh, carry it just like your rim oil. I keep a big can of rim oil. Uh, on my on my bench sometimes, but uh, I take I take the small one in the bag to save save weight. But if that runs out, I can just go home grab the big one. Uh, another thing I have probably nobody else keeps it is sight black. Does anybody keep sight black? No, uh, -uh. what is that? You spray it on your front sight uh, to for glare. Oh, okay. It's, it's kind of like a, a flat black kind of almost like spray paint but it's really more like charcoal dust i mean you can clean it off okay with regular oil and a brush later but uh if you start to get a glare off your front sight post small little spray can about the size of the rim oil can or the ballast all can and it's called sight black that's a good idea because if you do any early morning shooting when you got that sun coming up right in front of you sometimes you can you know it's hard to see your target especially if you're doing any kind of optic shooting you're using a scope i mean you got to watch out for glare and and you could be getting glare off your front sight or off your barrel you know, for that matter, and it could be uh, obstructing your view or causing any kind of uh, distortion. So that's not a bad idea. Hey really guys. cool, Dan. Yeah, man. So, John, hey, what do you know, man? Morning. What's up? Hi, thanks for the invite. Um, I just want to throw in my two cents, and in yeah. this case, probably worth half a cent, but I'll just I'll throw it in. No, no, we're all we're all two big um, content creators, so you know it's all good. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I I would just I don't know if you mentioned it already. Um, just proper protection so gloves eyes ears mm -hmm. you know the standard stuff everybody should make sure they have as well as um something grim 90 added which is also a first aid uh kit but what i wanted to ask about was about the cleaning brushes so if everybody has yeah. most people have the brass brushes right uh, I'm bore. I do, but I use primarily bore snakes. Uh, for, I've got a 30 caliber, a, a 22 caliber, and a nine millimeter bore snake that I use. Oh, okay, so you have the, yeah. the brass brushes, and in some cases, some people have the uh, uh, bore snakes. Like you did the review for yours. I think you had three in that review. The yeah. last one I saw. And I do occasionally um, use the bore brushes if I want to get a good scrub of the barrel. If it's just nasty, and I've got a lot of brass to clean out of the grooves, or right. So this, yeah. Right, so you have the brush cleaners as well with the mm -hmm. uh, plastic bristles or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to know about the rods themselves. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend, or is this something preferential? <laughs> so you have the brass rods at home, but how about having the plastic rods to go to the range with, or are they cheap enough? It's just good to have a. Uh, I, I'm I use the. I think break. it's Allen. Okay, if you go to Walmart, Al, I think it's Allen that makes it. The one that I have is a single piece cleaning rod for the AR, and it has a little bit on the end where you can put your 22 caliber brushes and stuff. I can use that with about anything to clear out a shell. Now, granted, mine's bent from being used, but I have a second one that I use just specifically for cleaning. The cool thing about that is it has kind of a rubberized coating around the rod. So it's not going to scratch up your barrel at all, and it's not going to break. It is a metal rod with almost like a rubbery kind of paint coating, almost like a flex seal coating on the outside of it. So you can use that. You can use that down the barrel if you got to tap out a shell or even clean the barrel for that matter, and not worry about snapping or not worry right. about well, snapping so one, and scraping. One, yeah. 
Right. So one of the reasons I'm asking is because if you do have an issue when you do fire, right, and you need to unjam something, you don't want to just stick anything down the barrel. You don't want to scratch it or yep. anything like that. Yep, yep, yep. So would you still recommend having use only taking the brass to the range or having those uh, – I forgot what kind of polymer they use for those rods. I have never used a polymer have- rod. Yeah. Um, I don't recommend the brass brush rods because they're multi-piece. And I've broken them before, tapping out shells or having having to hammer out a shell. They flex and bend, you know. Especially if you don't use the thicker rod that's in your set, you don't use say like the shotgun thickness brass rod because you get the real thin ones that'll work in like a 22, and then you have thicker ones that'll work with say a 12 gauge shotgun. Like mine's got four sets of brass rods that came with the kit, but they're not like especially if you got a new barrel or you're trying to push the cleaning brush through there, they flex pretty bad, and you got to be careful when you get started or they will snap. And I've snapped them before. So I, I couldn't recommend a multi-piece cleaning rod, especially if you need to clear something out. But that's just my opinion. You know, you can get yourself a $1 wooden dowel at the hardware store, and you can use that yeah. to tap out a shell, yep. too. You know, yep. just get a, you can get go a into the – Yeah. Yeah, over in the lumber section at Home Depot, they got them. They're, uh, they're kind of halfway down or a little bit lower uh, underneath some of the uh, awesome. some of the uh, wooden boards over there that you they sell for shelves or trim or whatnot, and you can get them in different diameters. Yeah, a wooden dowel so is a good idea. A suge- so that would be actually be a good suggestion to add it to your range kit. Or just throw I keep I keep the single piece cleaning rod in the back of my vehicle all the time. It's literally just sitting up against my back seat, just laying there. And it's there. That way I never forget. I don't ever have to worry about grabbing. It just sits there. You can do the same thing with with a dowel or or whatever cleaning rod you want to use, you know. Um Minor Range has a good point. The wooden dowel rod is softer on the barrel. You don't have to worry about scratching your barrel. Because if you got that rod that brass rod going down the barrel and you have nothing on the end, you're trying to tap something out, you could carve up your receiver or you can carve up the inside of the chamber pretty good if you're not careful. All right, so you, I see he also mentions a carbon fiber hops elite rod. Hey, man, whatever works for you, whatever works for you. <laughs> that just sounds fancy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, carbon fiber is cool stuff, but uh, <laughs> yeah, very, very expensive. Light, awesome, sure. but but yeah, very expensive. Uh, John, anything else that you would take to the range or anything you do take to the range, or what do you think? Um. The f- like uh, Grim90 said, you know, the first aid kit obviously is very important. And whatever first aid kits we do have with us, please make sure you always update them as well as add the proper gear for them. Yes. Don't yes, just take yes. a boo boo kit because a boo boo kit is kind of useless. Get yourself a good trauma kit. Um, I have that in the back of my vehicle. I actually don't keep it in the range bag. I should keep it in my bag with my ear pro and my uh, eye pro, but my vehicle is literally 25 feet away from where I shoot. So if I need to flip the back of it, because I've got a couple different med kits in the back of my vehicle that I keep. And so that's no, it's definitely a good idea, though. Definitely. That's something. you. Yeah, that's to. that's the weak point in my range bag. I've been saying for at least a year, I need to get an eye fact in there. And I started to get one together and then I never, never finished it. And uh, I was trying to find the right stuff to put in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I never even considered that uh, until somebody brought it up to me. And uh, it's it's um, it's a good idea to have. You'll get yeah. hammer I mean, bite, you'll worst, get slide worst, bite, you'll get, you know. Worst, worst comes to worst, you forget. Make sure at least you have a good car kit. You know what's weird, though? I, I keep forgetting to to put the IFAC in there, but I keep sunblock in there. I keep sunblock and bug spray in there. So, uh, yeah. Well, that's uh, right. I got priorities, right? Can, you can get a little cans of off that you can throw in your range bag, too, like Deep Woods off. That's, uh, especially, that's a, man, that's that's a real that, good one. Yeah. Here yeah, in Texas, Texas that's a, in the travel absolutely. kit section. <laughs> yeah. They make that, them in the travel kit section in, like, your right ear or, or uh, Dwayne Reed or one of those. Yeah, that would be a good one because especially out here where we have like West Nile virus that that we have many cases of it that pop up in like midsummer. Uh, well, you got to put that. Good. I put that on every time when I go out there. We'll have a couple cases here in town of people that actually are diagnosed with it or come down with it, and it's yeah, yeah, it knocks you out pretty good. Um, quick little comment here. Sean Newman said, "I'm disappointed in PSA," and I want to comment on this real quick. I ordered a pistol kit yesterday. It was three thirty nine when I put it in my cart. Then it suddenly went to three sixty nine, and then three eighty nine in a twenty four hour period. I still bought it, but that's some CTD stuff. Now, Sean, if you cancel your order before it ships, you can then if it's now three thirty nine, you can cancel your order before it ships. You won't get the restocking fee because I contacted PSA about that too. I bought an upper that was like they, they were like two nineteen. 
for for a, a an upper a full barrel upper upper assembly right well it was without the bull carrier group and the the charge handle and then when i went to go buy it I went to 269 with no free shipping so i'm paying like 95 dollars more for it than i did when it was on sale at like 219 with free shipping i contacted them they said go ahead and cancel it and i did and then i just reordered it at that price now it sucks because you got to wait for that reversal on your charge card to be recredited or come back at you whatever and so PSA's prices, man, if you see, here's the deal. You know you want to get something on PSA, save the money up, put it off to the side, wait for the right deal, and then just snag it. Because on their stuff, they'll have something on sale for a day, two days, and then it goes back up in price. Um, case in point, they were selling complete 20-inch blemished um, upper receivers or barreled upper assemblies uh, with a bull carrier group and a charging handle for $259. Free shipping. And I went, I went to go buy one this morning and they're back up to 319 with no shipping. So just you, can't, you can't wait on PSA. They were selling some with the non, which is the standard, you know, old school style handguards for 239 uh, for like 24 hours. So on PSA, you can't wait. You got to order stuff if you see it uh, because their prices tra- change uh, dramatically. Yeah, I, I think what it is is, Travis, every time that you yeah. go on there, Foose is watching you and he's just buying it before <laughs> you can. No, no, it, it's a foos when I go to get something and then it's not in stock when I'm at the checkout point where I put my credit card information in or my debit card yeah, information in there. So, so Patrick, uh, Patrick is asking on the gun channel side, masking is saying masking tape to repair your targets or cover up bullet holes, which is also a good idea. Uh, masking tape is kind of cheap. It'll do the job, but it, you just look cheap at the range. That's all. That's okay. You're not really worried about what others think. You're just there to uh, do what you need to do. I don't know. I kind of have a little bit of a range the little dots over thing the bullet holes. going. So. <laughs> yeah, it's not It's not a 12-year-old girl's dance party, you know, where you really give a crap what other people think. Yeah, come on. When you, when you go out to the range with, you know, a, a paper bag for your case and a high point, and you're shooting two oh, and no. oh, and you're listen, I hey, never, hey, everybody, never, starts, everybody starts with a with yeah. with a grocery bag with their crap and at the first range trip, all right? I never everybody's said, your glasses are all scratched any, up. Yep. yep. And, you know, your ear I, I pro is I just some wadded up toilet paper. For what they have. I wouldn't toot at anybody for having what they have. You use Dude, you use what you have. Yeah. We don't need we have enough hate in the gun community. They're out that range yeah. shooting, man. Just Give them some of your dots to cover up the targets or something. I, give them, I, I give have them. before. I've given. I, yeah, here you might need this. Be a good steward. <laughs> Let's not hate. All right. Um, I do. Yeah, I have a separate bag for just the targets, the tape, the staple gun. That's another one too. I take a staple gun with me to the range now. Squib, you use those cool little clips to put your target yeah. board up on, and yeah, that was those, really cool. You can plastic. swap out like four yeah. targets in like thirty seconds, which is really cool. Um. But I, I, I'd use the staple gun because we've got the wood back, and that's what I used to staple up my targets. But there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Jim is saying we've got Germany in the house. Uh, uh, Donkashe, I guess. I don't know. Over, on the, over on the YouTube side, someone I, I know no German Germany. at all. Uh, das ist gut. That's all I know for German, and I don't even know if that's right. Gut. Tante Ushi is joining us. Where are you from? Tante, I don't know you. Um, well, they're waiting for a response, <laughs> but before he gives a response, Dano's asking, anyone have sold have a sold Sears or Ward 12-gauge shotgun, and if so, do they come with the choke tubes? Uh, was uh, We're, okay, was that the gun channel side? or was that the, on the Those YouTube are, side? Those are uh, Mossberg clones, I think, right? Oh, have an old Sears or Ward's, oh, Montgomery Ward's 12-gauge shotgun, and if so, do they come with choke tubes? I had a friend that had a semi-automatic Sears shotgun, uh, when I was in high school, and it had an adjustable choke, like a built-in adjustable choke, you would turn the 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 nut on the end of it, the barrel nut on the end of it, it would actually adjust the choke size. So oh, I, wow. I have no idea what was on. I, that's a good question, guys. Anybody have an answer on that? Yeah. Hey, Dano, stay on topic, okay? Range back. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> hey, gear stuff. Gear stuff, man. We're talking about choke tubes. It's all relevant, so don't worry about it. Um, masking tape to repair your targets or cover up bullet holes. Hey, it's okay. We can take any questions that are out there. I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, let's see questions over on some more stuff popping up with our, with our German visitor. That's with us. Uh, Tante, uh, bit shown back to you too, if that's right. Yes. He's in Germany. Yes, yes, yes. We are here in, we're in Texas, Nebraska, what Michigan, New Jersey, uh, you know, I mean, there's, yeah, we got everybody represented here in the, in the, in the group. Now, now Ben is trying to be saying, 
Australia is hanging out with us right now too. Uh, ben is saying, does the government hunt you down for looking at gun channels on YouTube? That was a question for Tante. Uh, Germany, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, uh, many countries in Europe, they're not pro 2A, obviously, right? But there are firearm owners in those countries. Granted, they're, you know, they can be heavily regulated, but there are people that can own firearms in what Germany, obviously Switzerland, Spain. Uh, I, I mean, don't know if they do. There's some countries that they're anti uh, first amendment, the anti oh. free speech. Yes, and they've yes. they've locked up people in some of the countries in that part of the world just for saying their mind on yeah, yeah. the public, whatever Facebook, YouTube, whatever it was. Okay, okay. Uh, Lee, Texas. He's 28 miles northeast from Fort Worth. Lee, I've got uh, family and friends out down there in Wiley, so if I'm ever in the neck of the woods, I might hook you up. We'll go. Uh, Go to do some range time down at the bullet trap in Dallas. How's that sound? Um, but anyway, okay, back on topic. Range bag, something else I wanted to point out to you so we can get back to this now. Um, I, I, you know, if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of room in your range bag, these are awesome. These rem oil wipes. You guys ever get these? These things no, are. No, I've so, considered it, but uh, they are so I never saturated. have. I'm not kidding. You could clean your AR with one of these and still have enough left over to like to wipe it off on the outside and take all the prints off of it. They are, you can cut them into little squares. They're pre soaked. You want to have patches with you to maybe soak it up because these things are just, these are awesome. So one of these, just throw it in your range bag if you don't have a can or if your can's about empty or you can get these like, they're like two or three bucks for I think maybe six of them. Um, throw I, those in the I bag. Don't keep, I don't keep those wipes in there, but I do keep the lead off wipes in my bag. That's they, another one. That's another they one. They dry up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Some, uh, some lead remover wipes uh, to clean off your hands when you get done. That's always a good idea, especially if you... Or having a long range day, and you're, you know, depending on what you're shooting, you can have a lot of residue on your fingers and so on. Another thing uh, I keep in my range bag that probably nobody keeps is Ziploc bags, and it's ooh. not for for uh, the the items in the range bag. Although we do keep a we keep a towel in there with the Ziploc bag in case you know somebody's bleeding or oh, yeah. sweat or or whatever you get a lot of sweat in your eyes. But um, I keep I keep some used Ziploc bags in there for picking up brass, especially if it's wet brass. Because brass is kind of filthy and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This is true. This is true. Uh, let's see here. More gear. What else we got? I've got a Mosin-Agant front sight tool. And I know you can just tap them, but I didn't want to mess with a punch set. And this lets you do fine adjustments on your uh, Mosin front sight. I got this off eBay. This thing's made out of steel. So it doesn't bend or flex or anything like that. And it lets you push your sight over either way. You can reverse it. So if you got a Mosin and you need to do some adjustments on your Mosin, now granted elevation on a Mosin, you can, I've seen people snip off little bits of like shrink wrap tube to raise or lower their Mosin sight. Uh, but you know, Mosins are minute of man accuracy. So that's about as good is as you can get in some situations. Yeah. Is that aluminum? Uh, I think it's steel. I think it's stainless steel. Or as some people would say, aluminum. 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 Sure. No, I believe these are stainless steel. All right, cool. Yeah, I got this one. This was like 12 or 13 bucks on eBay. There was one guy selling the front sight tools. And and I mean, if you're okay, you know, it's you got your dovetail going on there. If you're okay with just tapping it with a punch, you go right ahead. But I wanted something where I could make some fine tooth adjustments. And it's got a little Allen wrench in on the end here. So you can tighten it across the uh, the sight because you can't well, necessarily hand tighten it and move the front sight at the good, same time. Good, good deal for the range, especially. It doesn't take up any space and it probably has little to no weight. Well, you might get that Mosin and not realize. Another thing that's an essential for a Mosin, and you got to watch out for this. This is the uh, Mosin Nagant toolkit. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, you want to make sure that they are legit. They're not a knockoff Chinese import. You want to watch around who you buy these from. This one's got the triangle with the air, with the arrow in it. So that's either what Tula or Ishmesh. And what this is, guys, is when you take apart your Mosin bolt, a lot of people don't realize this. When you reassemble it, there's like some factory scraping on the back of the bolt. You got to watch the uh, what the headspace clearance for the firing pin. And what it is, is you put this over the bolt carrier group. There's three notches here, and the rim of the bolt carrier group goes around the, uh, the outside of these two notches, and the firing pin itself goes up in the middle. If the firing pin pushes up on that notch, your uh, firing pin is out too far, and you risk puncturing your primers, and you could have uh, <laughs> an explosion. So uh, you want to make sure that your firing pin is just below this notch in the middle. And this has the, the little screwdriver tool on the end that you can use to screw in the, to, to loosen the screws if you want to take the gun out of the stock itself, the you know, your whole firing mechanism. But you want to make sure you get an actual real surplus kit. You don't want to get one that's a knockoff. And people will say, hey, I've bought this. It does not measure out correctly. It should have a factory stamping in it for either Tula or Ismesh. Um, yeah, you also get like a little barrel end on the, it. 
What's yeah, that? the last thing you want is improper stamping, and then you're mm-hmm. scratching something on because it just doesn't fit. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, and plus when we're talking headspace, you can't screw around with that. I mean, you got to make sure that it's where it's supposed to be. Uh, this also, also comes with the the jag that goes on the cleaning yeah. rod. And al- also, like you don't want to scratch. Also, yeah. you don't want to scratch the paint or the finish, or whatever, whichever. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And that that's just something I keep around. I mean, granted, I I don't take apart the Mosin bolt and disassemble and clean it that often, but when I do, many times it's sitting in my sight and clean stand. It's just sitting there. And so when I take it apart and do take the bolt apart, I like to have this handy. I don't want to throw it in a box and forget about it and not be able to find it. So that's something else you can run into. But that's that's pretty much everything I keep in my range bag. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I do have a couple extra straws that I keep around for the uh, the oil cans. Because if I need to get in there and, and do some 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 lubricating on something, like there's not a lot of clearance. Um, I usually do that too. What else do you guys recommend? What else do you take to the range when you go? Any other recommendations? Anything popping up in the chat over there? The only thing, the only thing, the only other thing that I take that you know, for those of us who wear prescription eyewear, I have a I have a pair of shooting glasses that are I actually went ahead and got some prescription things that I don't have to wear those stupid cover kind of I you know eye pro. Mm-hmm. I know I will always take multiple pairs of eye pro with me, ear pro, I'll have two or three sets with me also, just something else to throw in the bag. Uh, targets, but I mean, that's pretty much about it. Like I said, everybody pretty much has their own, uh, just certain set of items they like to take with them. And snake bite kit, especially if oh, you're shooting outdoors. Yes, yes. I and mean, we do, where I live, we do have rattlesnakes. That is actually an issue you have to watch out, especially if you're out shooting out on your land. Uh, you go north of where I live, you do get quite a few rattlesnakes uh, up in the hills in the prairie in Nebraska. Uh, that's something you have to watch out for too. Yeah, like you know, you might have some some regional specific items. Like um, Ellis, you need a um, three fifty seven mag for alligators. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. For gators, yeah. okay. That's always an that essential problem, to have with you too. <laughs> that, that problem has just been solved. <laughs> mm-hmm. You just don't go shooting in the swamp anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got his uh, GP one hundred now that he just picked up. So he's uh, he's sitting in good shape. That's a beautiful, beautiful pistol, man. Oh, it is beautiful. There, that is that is my hands down. That's probably my favorite revolver. That thing is just a, it's just so much fun to shoot. That's awesome. You know, I, I um, toyed with the idea of changing the grips, but I love those damn grips. Mm-hmm. It, it was just, no, can't do it. I, I might go ahead and put some. <laughs> I might go ahead and there, put some big sights on them, but that's it. You know, they're comfortable and they do a a really good job. Um, Okay, I want to show this off right now. Ellis, do you mind if I show off your next possible purchase since we're basically talking about done, talking about range box uh, essentials? Is that, do you mind if I show this off real quick? Go right ahead. All right, so this is, Ellis is contemplating this for his next purchase. I would say, man, maybe hold out and see what the uh, PSA MP5s look like and what those retail for. This is your uh, Kiapa Pac-9 9mm AK pistol package is what uh, Ellis is looking at here. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I mean, 459, can you get into an AK pad or 9mm carbine for less? Or is Aww, that pretty much? That thing is adorable. Dude, that, that, you can, <laughs> that truck gun, truck gun. Look at that. That is That's awesome, so man. Yep. Is that just blowback action or is it even, does it, it even uh, have a, like a piston system in it or no? I think it's blowback. Okay. Okay. There you what go. Is, what is that going for again? 459. Wow. And what is it? Here's a big question. Does it take Glock mags? Yes, it does. They make an oh, adapter. Awesome. Nice. Nice. They, Look at they that. Make, they make an adapter so it will take uh, Glock mags, but it comes standard for uh, Beretta. Oh, okay. Well, you know, availability, capacity. Why not, man? You know? Dude, that is that is, that is awesome. Oh, this is your adapter for the Glock mags. Okay. 459. You got free shipping yeah. on that? Ooh, and there we go. You and you could, the, uh, once you put the brace on it, then you got something. And that's just the, uh, is that the SOB brace or whatever it is? Is that, the, uh, you know, I'm not sure. SB or whatever. S, yeah. Dude, that's okay. I got to give you some credit. That is pretty sweet. I do like those, the, the Kalishnikov nine millimeter carbines that Ghost Tactical did a video on. But man, I'd, I'd love to get one of those, but you're probably looking at $1,000 for one of those. So that. Well, there are several uh, videos over on YouTube where they're talking about and reviewing this gun. And people love them. And they're not having any kind of 
failures or malfunctions with them. So. Well, yeah, there you go. If it runs fine and you're not seeing a lot of complaints about it, re go maybe do some reading up on it. Make sure it's not, if it's a nine millimeter blowback style, I mean, it's really hard for it to have issues unless you got to run a, a heavier grain uh, ammo, like say like a 127 grain or 129 or whatever through it. Um, well, that's what I, that's what I would run. It, okay. Okay. If, you know, and, if, if I'm, and, if I'm doing, you know, target shooting, I'll go with 115 grain. Yeah. But for, Defense of purposes, 124 is about all I use. And, you know, that looks pretty rugged and durable, and it's definitely a lot more compact than a, than an AR, uh, a 9 millimeter AR uh, pistol. Hey, Travis. So, yo, what's up, man? Patrick says next time you're in town, uh, he'll buy you some uh, duct tape. Oh, I've got plenty of that. Nice. Don't worry. I've got two rolls in my vehicle. Uh, he um, says he says you should get, he wants to go with you to the bullet trap next time you're in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's uh, this? Is Patrick on the Gun Channel side. I had somebody else yeah. at Lee, Texas, that was chiming in over on. Um, I work down the road from the Bull Trap. Are you kidding me, dude, Patrick? I will call you. I go to Wiley twice a year, and uh, my buddy and his wife. We I take him to the range, and we go there for a couple hours. So I will definitely uh, give you a call when I get down there, dude. That'll be awesome. And I, I, I'm and I meant masking tape, not duct tape. I apologize. Oh, oh <laughs> masking tape. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's something I piss. don't. Uh, yeah, masking I'm just pissing tape, off. Prepare your targets. Recover a bullet hole. So, you know, that's yeah. not. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I spend a small fortune on targets for the, the videos for my channel because I don't reuse them. I use them that one time because they're the reactive targets that show off, you know, the, the when they the when they, they go from black to the splatter and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, I usually will just leave them up there so other people can shoot at them or I'll take a few other guns with me, but I don't really reuse them. So, you know, it, targets can get expensive. Some people don't want to drop 10 bucks every two range trips on targets. You know, I mean, you can get some good paper ones, but that's why I got the staple gun because I can get the cheaper paper targets that I can staple up on the board. So, Patrick, that is good to know. I will definitely, hey. uh, definitely let you know. I go usually go in May and July just to kind of give you a heads up on that. So, yeah, Squibby. The targets can get expensive. The, the, the patches that you can use on the targets will help extend your mm -hmm. targets. Plus, they let you see where you've been shooting. Yep. I like the shoot and see ones because you get the, you know, it goes from black or orange to green. And uh, sometimes you may need a spotting scope, but they're a lot easier to see at distance. So if you're doing target checks and it's every 15 to 20 minutes because you don't have the range to yourself or something, that being able to see where you're hitting as opposed to, you know, stopping and walking out there or, or whatnot, it, it's helpful. The shoot and sees are not that expensive. They have a lot of varieties you can buy. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them at your sporting goods store. You can order them on Amazon. Yep. And they, they'll extend the life of your, your paper target. I yep. prefer that over the duct tape or masking tape. But if that's what you want to use, hey, man, go right ahead. I've seen yeah. somebody go out there with a piece of newspaper. There was no nothing on the newspaper. They just took a piece of newspaper, hung it up, fired three shots, put the rifle in their case, walked away, and they were done for the year. So, or hey, everybody's whatever. taking the white sheet of paper and put a black dot on it, you know, and then just aim for the black dot or side of their gun with the black dot. You know, there's nothing wrong now, with that. I, I mean, yeah, I've, yeah. I've seen people, they must not have a clue to what they're doing that or they just have money to burn they buy the shoot and seize and if, if you're familiar with those they've got the target in the in the in the center mm -hmm. so it's a circle it's a square it's some sort of it's a it's a it's a, it's a, a diamond it's some sort of shape that's your big target three inch four inch eight inch whatever and then on the border they have the dots and you use the dots to fill in the holes or you use the centerpiece there for a really big target or as your target i've seen people mm -hmm. actually clip those to the target stand shoot them and then take them off and throw them in a the trash and leave all the dots on there. And I mean, I've seen stacks of these things and I'll pull them right out and oh, reuse yeah. their dots. I oh, think yeah. they have no yeah. idea that these stick onto a paper <laughs> target that they, I just, mm -hmm. whatever that, or they just got so much money. It's like, Oh, I'm not going to use these dots. I'm above that. So there are range snobs worse than me. So yeah, Scott, no, I, I, yeah. I do the same thing. I actually have yeah. a whole bag full of them. So, yeah. Scott Pacini says he sees people using the cheap paper plates, and I've actually seen that quite a bit. It's actually a really good idea, considering you can yeah. get for, for what is like a 50 to 100 pack for like, what, two two bucks? Yeah, or something yeah like that. I like paper yeah. plates for birdshot. I like it for birdshot. See, that's shot. a good idea. I was going to take the, the, the Maverick 88 out and do a range test on I was kind of thinking of a best way to do that. Um, I'll probably get the reactive targets just so you can really see the spray, but it also is kind of a limited area too. When you start to back up a little bit, I wanted to show the patterning of the shotgun with different loads. Um, you know what we used to do? Hmm. Take those foam plates. Mm -hmm. and we'd, we'd take a cup, trace out the circle. Oh. And fill it in. 
there you go dude that's we almost need to do an episode on alternatives to expensive range gear you know yeah, <laughs> i'm telling you you can you can as somebody who's new to shooting they're they can drop you can drop 100 bucks on accessories alone if you don't really look around or don't really think about other ways that you can and that's you know we want to have people out there enjoying the range as much as they can you know not blowing every dollar that they have on the latest and greatest accessory and, and item you know um another thing yeah. to put in your range bag that might seem a bit obscure is a notepad and a pen oh, yep. you can take notes that. maybe maybe somebody's there shooting a gun that day that you've never seen and they say you want to shoot it and you shoot it and you like it write down the model number yep. or ammunition you bought a new kind of ammunition it sucks or it's really great write it down say don't buy this again buy this again for sure or maybe you do come across a situation with your range bag and you don't have a piece of gear and you're going dang i should have this mm -hmm. make a note because if you don't write it down you may forget mm -hmm. just keep it in your range bag and then before you go to the the store next time to buy supplies you dig in your range bag there's my note oh it says buy this buy this and buy this and that's what you do yeah, I uh, and then also a sharpie. I love taking sharpies. I have a couple sharpies in my bag because I'll write down the grain weight and the distance on my targets when I'm filming. Or if you just want to make notes before you go home, just you know, a good sharpie is is really hard to beat. Uh, throw one of those in the bag too. I don't. know. We might have gave people a, a wish list for, for a shopping list for this weekend. That uh, I'm, I'm literally taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> go back and watch this, and you'll get some good ideas. Yeah, that real avid tool. Uh, if you go to like, if you guys have a Shields nearby or like a Cabela's, that real avid gun tool I showed off earlier, um, you know, you can might be able to find those on clearance. Like I said, I think I paid nine ninety nine for that, and it came with a bore light uh, for like ten bucks. And so I'll, I'll do a I'll do a little little overview on that tool. It actually works out really well. Um, what else was I going to say? Okay, Ellis, I was going to ask you a question. So we're looking at that nine millimeter carbine, or the nine millimeter pistol. I'm sorry. Um, have you considered the high point ten millimeter? No. Okay, I was gonna say because I I see that as being a really popular gun this year. Everywhere I go, it's sold out. I got a notice from uh, Davidson's that they were in stock and they were literally gone in 15 minutes. Now I don't know how many they had. Usually they have at least like 50 to 75 of a gun when they first put it for sale. Um, I don't know if you're kind of thinking about like a blowback style carbine. If you were thinking about going that route, I mean your magazine is going to be limited unless you get their their specific 20 round mags that they sell for it. But yeah. If, if I was going to go 10 millimeter, I think I'd go with that uh, Rock Island 1911. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What do those run? Are those hey, about friends. 600 bucks? You know, I'm not sure. I haven't okay. looked. We'll have to check that out. Uh, yeah. Uh, I honestly have not really looked, but I know Rock Island makes solid stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had one of their 45s for a while. I really did enjoy it. It's not a bad gun. Just the basic GI model 45 is, it's. It's up there, man. I mean, it's definitely a good a good pistol to start off with, or just one to have in the collection. So I don't hey, disagree. With you. Yo, what's up, John? Uh, I just want to throw out there. Calaveras thirty two special says a lot of new shooters don't know that to ask the person behind the gun counter, and they convince them that they need tons of expensive gear. And I just want to remind any everybody, yep. if you have something you're interested in and something you love to do ask questions. There are always other sources out there where you could find better directions as to how to save money in doing these things. And this, and, and let, let me say this, that's where gun channels comes in real handy. If, if you yep. want to know something about a firearm, don't trust the guy behind the counter because he's wanting you to spend money. You jump over on gunchannels.com, you mm. ask one of the guys over there, G webs, me, Travis ghost clover, if you're into the older stuff, talk to Cycle Camp. They're a wealth of knowledge, and yeah. they they will absolutely sit you on a. I mean, here's an example. There are people out there who buy things that just because, for no other reason than that's what they want. Do they absolutely need it? Probably not. I just spent five hundred ninety nine dollars on a optic. Do I need a five hundred dollar ninety nine dollar optic? Probably not. But it's what I wanted. Do your own research, though. You know, don't take our word for anything. If I say, hey, look, if you want a decent scope to put on your AR, and I'm talking scopes here, the ACSS from uh, Primary Arms, great thing. I love it. But that don't mean you're going to love it. Yeah. Do your own research. Yeah. You know, that's just my suggestion. That's one of the things I would say. Um. But always, always, always 
be diligent and do your own research on these things. And and the guy behind, like I said, the guy behind the counter, he's gonna say, hey, look, if you're gonna buy the Smith and Wesson M and P A R, well, you're gonna need, you know, to put a ACOG on it. Why? You plan on going to war tomorrow? Yeah. Or um, you know, unless that's <laughs> exactly what you want. And here we have several Gun Channel members that have bought the $80 one off, off eBay, and they fired the heck out of that thing on shotguns and 308s, and 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 it still keeps zero, and it has not fallen apart. The, that imitation ACOG, there was a certain one out there that was like Sean Pondery has maybe. Pondery or, loves it. Yeah, you can you can get. I mean, now granted, it it is patterned after the ACOG, but it does the same thing. It's not. Uh, a battle scope, okay, but if you want it for well, to get the job done, for I don't know for the abuse you know, that it takes. It could possibly it could be, be a battle scope. Could roll off the same. Well, ACOGs would be made in the USA, but still, you know. Uh, Have you seen the abuse that thing takes? Yes, yes, I've seen some. Yeah, it's, it's, shooting like you know slugs out of a shotgun with that thing on the top, and it still keeps zero, and it's still. I may have to go that route. That might be, isn't it just a three magnification? Is that all it is? Yeah, I, I think that's it. And I, put you one know of those. What? Yeah. I would like to see a head to head comparison with a real ACOG compared to this thing, you know, put them both through the exact same test. Yeah. And see if it, and see if it'll hold up. Let me just get this out right now. If anybody's watching this video, if you want to ship your ACOG to me, I'll be happy to ship it back to you. We'll do, I'll buy that $80 uh, uh, imitation ACOG. We'll do a head to head range test on it. I won't drop your ACOG. I'll drop this other one and just see what happens. And, uh, you know, yeah, we could, we could, we could make it work. I, I, I don't have the resources to pick up an ACOG at this point, but, uh, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think one, somebody probably have a heart attack to see you drop a thousand dollar ACOG. No, I would not. I would no, not. No, no, no. That's a straight up 100 yard <laughs> right on concrete. But if, no. no, but it's supposed to be able to take that kind of abuse. You yeah, I what? think I need to pick up. I need, I can't remember what the name of the company is, but when you look on, on eBay, there's like a dozen companies <clears> selling <throat> these things, uh, you know, just, just. Just in terms of general gear, yeah, you don't, again, and, and one thing that a lot of us have in common on gun channels is we don't necessarily like to spend a lot of money on things like, say, not necessarily the accessories, but stuff like the range essentials and things. We try to get by in other ways so we can have more money for guns and ammo. So that's something that I think a lot of, you're going to get a lot of sound advice over on gunchannels.com if you go over there. Uh, and again, it's all free. It's all free. And so there you go. Yeah. I'm thinking about picking up a they have a little red dot from this shotgun I bought. You know, ah. nothing expensive, you know, 25 yep. eBay I, uh, red dot. That's it. That's how I'm putting on it. What is it? I have a, um, I have a little, I went to right. wish.com and bought one of their red dot sites and it says Bushnell on the side, but it's not. I mean, it didn't even come in a Bushnell box, but it was $20 delivered. And I actually sent one to Night Strike, and we both have used the heck out of them. That little sucker keeps zero. Now, I've had bad cheap red dot optics before that just, you know, didn't weren't worth a lick, but um the optics, you know, you really maybe shouldn't skim so much on it, but something like that little ACOG, that might be a lot of fun to play around with. I don't know. Okay. Anybody else want to throw out any more range bag essentials? Anything else uh, left that we didn't cover? I think we covered about everything. Um I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, I think we covered, man. We had a pretty the, decent list. The yeah. two things that uh, what probably the past two weeks or so, the gloves that were in your video showing uh, what you wear at the range. I tried those out, I tested those out, and they work pretty good. So I'm adding those to my personal protective equipment. And then Jared Walsh did a video on uh, this Condor dump bag, and it's a uh, it's a bag. It looks like it, you can attach it to your belt, but if you unfold it here, and you can do this while holding the phone Dude, what about that you waffle maker it? man we need that waffle yeah. maker with this <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my son's waffle maker oh. uh he, he <laughs> likes waffles so we got him a waffle maker Tactical and uh, he, yeah yeah that's the only thing he can cook so yeah see I, i'm doing everything from my kitchen countertop just like you yeah Chris, there you go Gun, the this, gunsmith and kitchen this is called the the condor dump bag or whatnot if you go to uh jared walsh uh yeah. it might be under rupan yeah, uh, yeah, channel. He does a he does a, a video. Uh, he did a video about this. Uh, so I ordered off Amazon. I'm actually going to use this for my uh, Ear Pro, Eye Pro, personal protective oh. equipment. Uh, I've got a bag right now about this size, and I was stuffing enough gear in there for two people. 
Well, now we're taking gear for four people. Mm. So I need another bag. And it's kind of nice if you can separate because, you know, you got your earmuffs and you got your glasses. Another thing, too, if you have the earmuffs uh, with the electronic uh, for the noise canceling, bring yeah. a spare set of batteries. Whatever you oh. do, bring a spare set of batteries. Yes. Whatever you should have one at least one spare battery. If you have any kind of electro optics, like I got a Vortex Strike Fire too. Um, some of those batteries you just can't find them at your local Walmart. So uh, if you've got a TLR one or any kind of a pistol light, they sometimes take a specific battery. Carrie, I always have an extra CR twenty thirty two battery, an extra battery for the the Strike Fire two, an extra battery for the TLR one, um, because it would not be fun to go to the range and turn your turn your sight on and you've got nothing. You know your dot sight. Um, and granted, that just means you're going to have some fun with your iron sights, but still, definitely, definitely, definitely keep an extra battery. That's a good one. That's, hey, that's actually one I didn't that? think of because I have those. The, you know, whatever hey, Travis, battery what goes in your optic. Yeah. What's that now? Go ahead, guys. What, what was that brand you mentioned just now? Uh, the TLR1, the Streamlight? No, no, no. For the Vortex? range bag. Oh, uh, range bag or range, range box? You said something about Spec Ops or something. Oh man, I don't the even brand, remember the brand. Um, no, I, I. You're talking about the range box that it featured in the video, or no, no, literally like five oh, seconds crap. ago, <laughs> dude. I have no idea. Uh, oh, somebody might need to go back and check that out. Yeah, I'll the computer was cutting out with the oh, reception. Okay, okay. Really, really uh, no, for for bags, I actually just use kind of an assortment of different bags to haul my stuff out. Okay, so I just—is he talking like, about what I was showing? The condor, condor dump the bag. Condor bag. Yeah, that was that was quick showing off the little the condor dump. Yeah, so bag. I just want to yeah. remind people: you don't so, have to spend the most amount of money yeah. on your product. Yeah. You can spend less money without going cheap and still get a really good quality product. Yeah. Now, something else you might want to think about is spare shooting glasses. Yep. And spare earplugs. Yep. And you know you you. you one of you might go with a buddy to the range and he forgets his. Okay, buy a pack of those cheap foam earplugs, dude. They work fine. They're great. You know, I forgot my earplugs. Well, well lucky for you, I've I've got a pack here. Here, Take yeah. Um, um, I I always have at least uh, three pairs of iPro and two to three pairs of EarPro. Just something could break. I mean, I've got different EarPro depending if I'm doing rifle shooting or pistol shooting. Sometimes I want something uh, more comfortable. I've been using the the Pro Four shows. Uh, I think that's just or you a, you you no. take somebody to the range that you don't normally yeah. take and they forgot or they had no idea. And you're like, hey, where's your safety glasses? Where's your earplugs? And they look at you kind of puzzled. If you pull a brand new pair of safety glasses or brand new package of ear earplugs, inexpensive ones, out of a package, they may be more likely to want to put them on than if you pull out this nasty, you know, it's all scratched up and yep. covered in all kinds of dirt and stuff. It's like, oh, just blow it off, man. You're good. <laughs> yep, yep, so exactly. I always keep a new pair of both just in case. I happen to be at the range with with somebody who's who's not familiar or mm -hmm. just forgot. So I'm not sure who this person is. This Aniza Aniza Cooking and Beauty. This person's been commenting on a lot of my videos lately. No, just smiley faces. Aniza, welcome to the channel. If you've never uh, been here before, they're discussing Aunt Jemima syrup over there in the mm. chat right now. I think that doubles as a good uh, as a good gun grease for your AR. Uh, <laughs> it starts to smell like pancakes as it warms up, you know. It oh, smells like God, maple man. syrup as it warms up. Throw some eggs on there, some flour. You could yeah, you can cook a cook a drop an egg on your receiver when you get done shooting. I'm telling you, Aunt Jemima discussion right now. Take your Aunt Jemima with you out there to the uh, out there to the range because you might have to have a chugging contest when you get done. Right? <laughs> oh if man! If you're gonna use maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Get the real stuff, man. Get the you real know, stuff. Not all of us have access to the good, you know, Vermont or Connecticut uh, maple syrup. It's it's kind of hard to find. I, if it, I don't. I they I don't recommend thing. having a chugging contest with that stuff. Trust no, me, your stomach especially if you're diabetic. Gonna, I'll probably get sued yeah, for giving you that advice after your, watching the video. Your stomach will not thank you. Mm -hmm. now, I'm, I'm not sure you guys have ever heard of this before, but there's this invention, brand new. It's called the internet that you could order shit from other places and have it shipped to you. Yeah. The, <laughs> oh that's that's true but i mean make... the problem is is when i want pancakes i don't have time to wait for amazon prime to get it to me in 48 hours i need syrup and i need it now so i have to go to the yeah. corner store and i pick up the uh the, the little bottle of log cabin or the aunt jemima or the great value brand dude if yeah. you're paying if you're paying 23 dollars for a bottle of real maple syrup just spend the extra six dollars and get an next day <laughs> 
That's true. This is true. You know, it's just, it's just a couple bucks more. I'm, so. I'm kidding, of course. But all right, all right. <laughs> I'm going to propose something for an April Fool's Day chat here on the internals, and so you guys are going to have to uh, not. We're not going to give any clues on this one. I think I have an idea for how we can do this one. So there we go. So oh, guys, no, uh, uh, also, what's that? You can't do that. Why not? Because there's there's a certain person out there who would you know. It, he would orgasm all over himself constantly. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, <laughs> I, I don't video think... should not have that effect on anybody. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah right? Alice, I don't think that's what he was suggesting. No, it was just it. You know, you, you come to Caliber Corner to see a to see a gun talk or a parts talk, and then you actually see us talking about this instead. So, uh, <laughs> okay, you can do that. But here I'm we go. Here we go. I, here we go. This is all right. So we, I want you guys. We're gonna we're gonna give you a very special chat on April Fool's Day or the weekend of April Fool's Day. Uh, I'm gonna be here for that. This is there. You good. go. Look at that. How about that one? Look at that bottom. This is what we're talking about before we started. Ah, here we go. Because we've got a lot of members and gun channels that need that right there at the bottom. That's they definitely need some advice on that. So, um, okay, so Ben's got a question over here. Let's get serious for a minute. One thing I want you guys to know is I have not discussed, you know, the, the school shooting issue or school safety or things like that. I'm going to come out and do a video on it. I've been doing a lot of comments on other gun channel members' podcasts and videos about school safety and and the things that happened down in Florida. I've not actually put out a video about it myself. There was a question on the gun channel side, and I want to address this real quick. And it, I'm not afraid to come out. In fact, I'm adamantly in favor of uh, Army teachers in the classroom, myself being a public high school teacher. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a different video. Um, somebody had a question here. Was there any further discussion at your school, I believe, about beefing up school security or letting teachers carry the one issue we have in our state is that, okay, has there been any talk about you being able to carry at work yet? Paper plane crash had that question. I don't know if that was intended for me or intended for somebody else in the chat. Um, unfortunately, Nebraska does not allow teachers to carry in the classroom. I've had many discussions with my, my, my district superintendent about this. And we've been looking at the, the fast training program. I sent him information on that. Um, CBS news. I got to give him some credit. They did a, a good, positive spotlight on a Denver teacher that's been carrying for a year and it might be an elementary school where he is and he talks about how it works out the training he had to go through um and so you know I, I I'm gonna come out and make my statement about what I think we need in public schools for safety and obviously I'm completely in favor of <laughs> teachers that want to do it to carry in the classroom um the point I'm, I'm getting around to with is that we had a question over on the YouTube side that said why is it that the uh FBI has plenty of resources to investigate a sports scandal, but not the warning signs of a school shooter months in advance. Now, the excuse that I heard from the FBI, and we all know that this is probably BS, was that what happened down in Florida, the reason why they couldn't find the kid is because they couldn't track down where the message came from or who the message came from, even though the kid's name was right there in the message that he posted on the YouTuber channel saying what he was going to do in that school. Um, I don't know if the FBI just, you know, they, they do get a couple thousand uh, YouTube messages per month with threats and things like that. And, and I don't know, I don't know what their protocol is to investigating things that people say, but I think, uh, if you look at the content of what some people say, you might want to take it seriously. So, uh, maybe if they went after I more think people what that you, made threats, you know, what you need to do is couple that with the frequency. Okay. Every one of us is a firearms guy. We're a second amendment guy, that sort of thing. If we were, uh, it, if, if uh, I came to pick up my son at school and it's it's uh, warmer weather and I happen to be wearing my Anderson manufacturing T-shirt and I, I'm not walking into the school. I'm just walking up to the, the front of the school where you pick up your kids and we're walking home for, for you know, fresh air and, and the nice weather and that sort of thing. And somebody sees it and they go, oh, my goodness, that's a gun manufacturer. And they call the police and go, this guy was wearing a gun T-shirt when he went to, to pick up his son at a public school. And the cops came and knocked on my door. That's kind of excessive. Now, if I was, I don't know, open carrying on school grounds or something then that's against the law here. Uh, maybe they need to do something or, uh, you know, I don't know if I was, I mean, there's, there's, there's an in-between, I guess that, but this guy had the cops uh, called on him like 39 times, 39 times, not once, it, not twice, not because he was wearing a t-shirt or because he said something 39 freaking he, times. Look, so, man, he made a, he made a bad decision and society, society completely failed 
at helping this young man out, even though he was given plenty of opportunities and a job and a place to live, there was just something going on up in his head and, and something was just not right. And it was not there someplace along the way, somebody had, had missed an opportunity to help that kid or get that kid some help. Um, you know, I don't it, want, I don't want law enforcement getting involved because I posted a picture on Facebook of yeah. the family at the range that day saying we had a good range day today as a family. And I go, Oh my goodness, the family's got guns. But, We've got to do something. I know, but, but what if the somebody's kids, what standing the there. Posted, yeah. 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 If they're doing posts like that, where they're going, I'm going to be the next school shooter or yeah. they're they're They are, they are, you know, doing an intimidating kind of thing saying I'm coming for you or something like that. Okay. At that point, you're not. So the people on the two way side, when you post something or when you are go out in public, when you do this, Try to be, I don't know what the tactful, not tactical, tactful. If you want to dress up in all your body armor and all this other stuff and, and, and point the gun at the camera and, and say something really nasty or whatnot, and you don't mean it towards anybody or whatnot, don't be surprised if somebody sees it, they, they take it the wrong way, but they're going to because of jerks like this yeah. that have ruined it for everybody. Yeah. So I'm just saying, if you're going to do something, do it tasteful, do it tactful. Don't do it if you don't have to, that sort of thing. And then they can stop focusing on the people that aren't a threat and go, well, we're overwhelmed. We get 500 calls a day. Well, now you're only getting five calls a day because those five calls are about the legitimate threats, not yeah. just, oh, my goodness, I saw him go to the gun range. You know, yeah, I, was... I just wonder, I'm not I'm not trying to defend the FBI, but I just wonder how many how many yeah. complaints they get every day over people that are not breaking the law. But this was kind of blatant, though. This was just yeah. obvious and blatant. The, the fact that, that all these different avenues were alerted and all these social media sites this kid used were alerted and notified and flagged and nothing happened you know and and again i'm gonna say this last i'm gonna say this i read all these interviews of people that were there that saw it every single person said oh yeah that was the kid that we knew he was going to do something someday we knew that that he could potentially be the one and oh if there's ever a kid that was going to do it he would have been the one as a teacher if i had thoughts like that i would have got that kid some help or talk to that kid or found somebody for that kid to talk to or done more. And I'd be like, Oh yeah, that's the, that's the next uh, one that's going to do that. You know, I, I can't, I don't understand how people could sit there and just watch that happen. Of course, we're in a society in a culture where when a fight breaks out, the first thing that the big boys do is they pull out their cell phones and start filming it instead of breaking up the fight and stopping potential harm between two human beings. Right. That's what you do is you film it and you put it up on YouTube because that's how, that's how kids operate these days or young people or just people in general. And that, that really disturbs me. Um, but anyway, like I said, that'll be another chat for another time. And, and I think we're probably, I didn't want to really talk about that until the end of the day, because we've heard hours and hours of podcasts about it. And we can't quit fighting the fight. Don't get me wrong, but I think we need to, we need to move and talk about some other topics just for our own personal mental wellness. Right. I mean, we can't get locked into this, this pattern of thinking. We need to realize that there's, there's other stuff out there that we can, we can discuss and, have a chat and, and I'm not trying to sidestep the issue at all. I'm, I'm not afraid to come out and, and address my feelings about school security whatsoever. I don't feel threatened for my job. If I come out and state what I think we need to do in schools. I mean, that's, I'm fine with it. Um, but yeah, I've had a couple of people say, Hey, when are you going to, well, how do you feel about it? What are your thoughts on it? What do you think we should do in the schools? And I'll, I'm going to make a video on that. I'll talk about it, but I didn't want to do it as a live podcast because there's, there's been so many good podcasts that people put out there. Clover tech did a great one last week that was actually had school experts in and, you know, psychologists and nurses and training people and, and myself and another and Grimm was there. And, you know, there's good chats if you want to educate yourself on that issue. Uh, but I mean, we're all, I think we're all in the same boat here. I think we all have the same frame of mind. And I think that kind of makes a, a, you know, we all know, we all know what the right thing is, should be that we should do. So, um, all right. So anyway, guys, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I actually have to help a buddy work on his pickup truck here in about the next 15 minutes. So I need to get going, but, uh, everyone, I want to thank you guys for joining in today. Let's go ahead and see who, uh, was joining us over on the gun channel side. If you haven't gotten over there yet, please sign up, get yourself a membership. The website is being revamped. It looks really cool right now. There's a lot of good features. It's been streamlined. It's even easier to use. Um, so joining us over on the, the the gun channel side, we've got Calaveras is with us and Patrick and John was there and John was here and Jim, Dano, uh, Paper Plane Crash was there for a while. Night Strike sends his regards. He does have a family event going on today, so he wasn't able to join us. Uh, Midnight Range TM was busy over there working, but he's working with us today. He shared some information with us too. Let's see over on the YouTube side. Uh, Jim is there. Jim is here. Ben Farrell's out there joining us. Thank you, Jim uh, and Ben, Scott. 
Uh, Sean Pondry, Scott Pacini, Sean Newman, Vandal joining us from Australia, CLM joining us. There's a few new faces here I haven't recognized before. Uh, Travis P11, I want to be a police girl from Anisa Cooking and Beauty. Beauty, great, excellent. Uh, start talking to the department, start talking to maybe, I don't know if you're in high school, talk to a career counselor, start looking into the field. If you want to be a police officer, that's great. Um, again, a lot of you guys joining in this morning. Thank you so much. Patriot in the dark was with us. Uh, George Jorge Cortez had a question real quick. Um, how, how's the best way to mark your magazines? You know, if you buy P mags, they do have little spots on them where you can write the mag number or the caliber on it. There's a few magazines that have like little dots that you can fill in to mark the number or the caliber of the mag. Um, I just use these little rubber bands that I've actually got these. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I got these from one of the man cans from Iraqi veteran about two years ago. A bunch of these came in my box. I had some marked uh, 556 and some of them marked 300 blackout. I just put them on for fun. I don't actually have a 300 blackout rifle, but that's just a 556 band. But uh, you can get those online if you want to mark your magazines. Uh, if I'm carrying get... different loads and different mags, yeah. I just use different color mags. If so, There's so oh. many colors out there. Yeah. I mean, but you could just use colored electrical tape. Get a paint marker. You can get a paint marker anywhere, uh, Sharpie, even, or you can get a silver Sharpie. And so you can just write right on the mag and it won't come off. If you put some gun oil on it, it could come off, but at least you'll have your magazines marked for your range trip while you're out there. Uh, otherwise, guys, I think that's pretty much about it. So thanks for joining us. We will plan on meeting next Saturday. Uh, you guys got to understand that my family is a couple hundred miles away. So when I travel, it tends to usually be on Saturdays or I get busy working on stuff because I'm, I'm busy up at school. So uh, I can't always have a caliber corner on Saturday. So if there isn't going to be one listed on YouTube or one doesn't come on at 8 a.m. in Central Time, then you know we're just not going to have one for that day. Um, but otherwise, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Before we go, we got Ammo Cat hanging out with us today. She's chilling. She always likes to hang out in the uh, the podcast and, and when I'm doing my gun cleaning videos. Uh, let's go ahead and finish my up. My favorite here, cat. Yeah, your favorite cat, Ammo Cat. <laughs> Dude, she's awesome, man. She loves to she loves to watch me just sit around and clean guns. She just sits here and just watches the whole time. She's not. She's like fascinated with it. Doesn't bat at anything. Doesn't touch anything. Doesn't chew on anything. Um, Ammo dogs Caught are her well. Right yeah. No, she's just a natural man. She's definitely pro two A all the way. Uh, Jim, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, nope. I, I guess the only thing I'd add to the whole range bag that I actually found in the bottom of mine digging around is, uh, stick a gun, stick a gun channels patch in there. And Ooh. that way, when you do range day pictures, you can just pop that right there. Heck yeah. Or get your gun channel sticker. So you can maybe put on the back of your friend's vehicle. If they come out to you the range the first time or, you there know, you go. yeah, have some stickers to pass out. Cover uh, up that high point sticker with a gun channel sticker. <laughs> Does high point even make stickers? I didn't that possible? tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see sean newman said hey who is gizzard gary i just got a new sub but i don't but i don't post any vids you guys want to enlighten sean newman on who gizzard gary is he's gizzard he's down gary. in kansas yep he's my neighbor down south he's a great uh, guy. awesome guy yeah. good good person to have following your channel good person that's going to comment on your channels uh he is a Taurus fan though too so that's something to keep in mind so he, he uh, never he never misses one of my shows Ever. Sean, Sean, a lot of the times he says weird. Um, a lot of the times, like if somebody I'll just subscribe to somebody that makes a comment on my channel, if they've got a cool name for a channel and they don't have any content, I might subscribe to them because they could be an up and coming channel. Gizzer Gary says, Hey, thanks, guys. Uh yeah, so no, I mean that's just something I'll subscribe to some people just so I can kind of or if you post a video and you don't have a lot of content, I'll still subscribe to you because I never know if you're gonna put another video out or maybe I like the video that you made. So yeah, it's not uncommon to have stuff like that happen. Um, otherwise, let's see. Moving on. Uh, Squib, anything you want to say before we go? No, no. I think we covered a lot of stuff today, and we okay. we uh, we definitely all gave our input as what we've done in the past or what we're doing. So mm -hmm. it's a good show. Good. Yeah. Hey, range bag essentials, man. We all have one, or we've got something that we take to the range. Why not? To the range, why not share? So good. Uh, John Z, anything you want to say? Joining us from the big city of New York. I just want to thank everybody for joining us and thank you for the invite. And cool, man. Check out Gun Channel's fourth year upgrade is almost over in five or six days. Nice. So go ahead and check that out. And don't forget to check out Gun Channel's for all your favorite content creators and more. We've got some Indiegogo projects going on, John. Can you comment on, comment on that real quick? What's what's G Web's uh, up to? Uh, G Web's is upgrading the site. He's mm -hmm. currently in the process of doing upgrades so they're working out kinks and whatnot okay Try. um you can get in on the indiegogo projects right now for what the gun channels trading cards or the new deck of cards that's going to be coming out 
Is that Correct. right? There's a couple of different yeah. items that are out there you can buy into. There are trading cards and also playing cards that they're working on. And if everybody is on gun channels, they need to go ahead and vote on that. And GWeb's posted a voting option to vote for the trading cards or the uh, individual cards. So go ahead and post your vote on that and make your comments yep. there so he knows what the people are thinking. Yep. And uh, again, don't forget to check out the Indiegogo itself Then go support it. And uh help GWEBs finish those upgrades so we can have smoother uh, internet uh, interactions with each other. Now, I want to just say that I, I got a feeling that my, my trading card is probably going to be one of the more valuable ones out there when it comes out because it's probably <laughs> going to have... No, 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 no. Ellis, listen to me. It's going to have my old picture up there. That's like a limited run, first run, first batch where I'm and crawling up that eight-foot tall climbing wall with no oxygen. Um, that and it's all, right also there. automatically trap I approved. Well, and they are Travi approved. They'll get you into any Travi meeting anywhere. And now this is my new logo. The, the reason why I turned the camera off, uh, shout out to Ghost Tactical. He actually designed it. There's two different designs, too. There's one that's got the bullets on it. And there's one that's got the, the, the 11. Uh, and there's bullets instead of the 11. I'm going to actually get some T-shirts going and some stickers going. And just a shameless self-plug, I'm going to do a 7,000 su subscriber giveaway. And I'll be giving awesome. away some, uh, some Travi swag. And Ellis, you know what? You're going to get some and you're not even asking for it. Now, that sounds inappropriate to say over the Internet, but uh, I'm going to be sending you some some T-shirts and some bumper stickers. And I expect you to don the official wardrobe of the Travi. In fact, we might just make a Travi T-shirt instead that says Travi 11. I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Hashtag do not trust the Travi. Never. And you know what? Some of us are starting to put some parody videos out there, too, of other gun channels. If you haven't seen it, uh, awesome. Ghost Tactical did a nice one of, of Yankee Marshall that I think I peed a little when I watched it. And uh, <laughs> I, I know that I know that Midnight Range has done some parodies of Clover Tack. That I'm Midnight on. Range one was spot on. It was it was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was priceless. The, the meatloaf, you know what? I watched that video. What's that, Ellis? I watched, I watched that video. He had mentioned me in it. He is such a uh, he's a dick. What did he call you, uh, um, Ellis Degenerate, or what? Is that what yeah, he said? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, Matt started that. See, the other night on Matt's chat, it was what was uh, what do you call me, Ellis Ellis Degenerous, and <laughs> I know it's going to stick. Um, I ain't going to mm, fight. It's giving me an idea for a parody video there, Ellis. And remember, yeah, yeah. you and I are looking more and more like every day. So shut up. Just no, I just got I just got to master your dialect, and then I'm good to go. That Clover ain't... does a Clover does a good Hickok forty five impersonation, but he doesn't have the height to to, to do the acting yeah, part. Hickok so I don't know how. It, yeah, your internet shooting companion. He does a pretty good one, so I'd like to see him do do a, a Hickok one. And I love the gun guy. I always make fun of the gun guy because he's got the coolest radio voice on on YouTube. Hey everybody, I'm Joel here. I'm the gun guy. We're talking about the forty five ACP. <laughs> hey Travis, just Yo. before we move on to the next person, SS Pawn says I want oh. a sticker. Oh, SS Pont, dude, you're gonna get you're gonna get a t-shirt, you're gonna get a sticker, you're gonna get a sign. Uh, you know, I'm even gonna autograph it for you, bro. There'll be a billboard on <laughs> I-80, the official this, gun store of Travis P eleven. This this <laughs> the bumper sticker is gonna be autographed by the trigger finger of Travi Travis P eleven. I'm telling you, man, it's 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 where it's at. So wow. I'm just excited. My whole life I never thought I'd get my own t-shirt, and now I do, and it just it just brings tears to my eyes. So I'm telling you. Bringing tears to mine, too. Yeah. Ellis, you're going to get tears to your eyes when you see the video I make for you. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm just going to keep listening to you and studying uh, your your Southern drawl, and we'll uh, we'll get that perfected. And uh, I can already recreate your living room, which sounds kind of spooky, but I, I've got some ideas, Ellis. I just want to get this out there right now so you don't take it personal when I come out there, because I'm not going to make fun of you too much, okay? Um, see, here's the, here's the problem with that. Hey, what's the problem, Ellis? You tell me. The, the issue is, yeah. what is the I've issue? Made, I've, I've, I've is never, it? I've never made a video. I know. In my living room. Uh -huh. Well, wherever you are, I can recreate that that blind and that 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 muted toast tone you got going on in the background. I can do that. So, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting some ideas. I want to do a parody video because I do an April Fool's video every year, and uh, I I'm kind of coming up with some ideas for what to do, and I'm running out of time, honestly. So, well, sweetheart, you give it your best shot. I will do that, Ellis. You ain't got nothing to worry about. That ain't it. <laughs> that You're is on. it, Ellis. I'm working on it. Now, I'm telling you. <laughs> anyway, all right, enough of that. So I wanted to get my new logo out there. So shout out to Ghost Tactical for doing that. I, I had just been, I'd had the same little picture for years on my YouTube channel and my page and stuff. I That was kind of a funny picture that I put up. I just thought it was kind of cool because I'm scaling an eight-foot-tall climbing 
wall, which is about as tall of a climbing wall as I could probably capably handle. Um, that was actually taken, that picture was taken at the Colorado School of Mines, by the way, if you've never been out there in uh, Golden. So that, that picture was shot. Again, I did that climb without oxygen, so I'm very proud of myself. So, yep, anywho. So uh, where are we at? So Ellis, anything you want to plug for shows? You've always got shows on, and I feel bad because I'm just getting home from school when, you're, when your shows are coming on. And I'm trying to get stuff put away and try to get in on your chats and stuff. What, do you, what are you doing for programs? You name your show something different every week. Have you finally settled on names for your programs yet? Actually, actually, I, I, we have come up with um, two names. The the Tuesday night show is hanging with the outlaw. Yeah, that, that's the official name of the Tuesday night show. Yeah, and the Thursday night show is the Thursday night shootout. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So we have come up with two official names for both of the shows. Um, I'm working on trying to get some intros put in there so you know some background music something yeah it's that's that's kind of hard too to come up with a nice nice like a cool fun intro video I, i'd like to get one of me doing some some shooting footage and make like a little five or you know five or eight second intro video um oh you know, speaking, yeah. of, speaking of shooting videos i've got yeah, a man. shooting video that should be coming next week um I, I'm, I'm actually taking the glock that ghost sent me out and oh are yeah. you yeah, nice yeah. I'm Did you find gonna, ammunition for it? Because that's what a point point one nine millimeter is. That what that thing shoots? Is that? It's, um, it's tiny. It's a little bitty damn thing. But yeah, yeah. You should do the you should do the ghost though. tactical dot torture test with that thing. Uh, I'm I'm gonna uh, if I could yeah. if I had a printer I would print yeah. out his this month's the uh, uh, thing and try that. But I don't have a printer handy, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I will yeah. think of something. I will think of something. Cool man, but but I'm uh, yeah I'm gonna make the video of shooting this Glock that he sent me. I mean, it's um, it's it's fairly. I will say this: it's fairly well made. Yeah, it's very solid, very very yeah. solid. So yeah. we're gonna see what it'll do. All right, all right, cool, cool. Um, I'm actually hoping to have a real Glock here, a new one by uh, probably by around March or April is what I'm thinking about doing. So I'm 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 in the market for another one. I'm sorry. I don't know, man. No, no, it's okay. No <laughs> I'm I'm happy with them. I've got hey, I've got other fun stuff sitting around. You know, it's I got plenty of other firearms. There's just there's one that I'm seeing a good deal on out there right now that I'm kind of looking at. So more to that, more of that'll come later on. So all right. Hey, but anyway, yeah, man. Uh, check, check out my shows. Uh, yeah. I got one six o'clock Tuesday, eight o'clock on Thursday, Eastern time, both. Um, if you like it, subscribe. Hey, okay. we'd love to have you. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, no, it's it's always fun going on your show, and I love talking about the Travi conspiracy. You know, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, well, uh, good stuff. So, I I am fighting the dil, dil, diligent fight against you guys. So I don't know why. Why don't you just give in? We we mean yeah, no harm right to there. you. We're we're pro gun. We're pro bacon. What what else do you want? You know, I mean, we're 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 on your team. We're on your side, Ellis. Give in. Give in to the Travi side. Have you ever seen They Live? Of course, of course. We yes, inspired yeah, the movie. Exactly. We inspired we inspired the writer for that film. I mean, yeah, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. No, you'll get some Travi gear in the mail. You're going to get some loot yourself, too, and you can uh, you can sport the, you know, you'll blend in with the Travi surroundings, and you can go freely and not have to worry about anything. So I'm telling you. Yes, I will wear the gear just as a warning to others. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and call it i want to thank y'all for joining us for over two hours today we had a little chat about our favorite range box accessories thank you guys for joining in on the gun channel side thank you all for joining in over on the youtube side I'm trying to see if there's any uh what do you if you ever have too many teach you can throw a glock in the post for me vandal i'll tell you what right now vandal if you move to the states man i'll we'll, we'll, we'll go do some firearm shopping okay i'm just gonna tell you that right now you ever get out here we are going to take care of you because you've You'll be coming to the land of freedom, and we will take care of you. So there we go. Uh, yes, the Travi. Remember, Grim ninety says the Travi do come in peace. This is correct. We do not. Uh, we do not promote violence or or anything like that. So yep. That's just what they say on the outside. No, we're a peaceful, good people. We don't. Oh, yeah. you know, uh -huh. we, we like this. We like the simple things in life. You know, cable, like brain, free trips to the to salad bar, them. air conditioning. We're very simple creatures. You don't have to worry. It's fine. It's fine. So, you, all right. You, so like anyway. I said, you remind me of Pinky and the Brain. You're trying to take over the world. 
We already have. It doesn't matter. Okay, on that note, we're going to go ahead and call it. So thanks for joining us, guys. Again, I'll be having some sporadic videos coming out. I cannot get out to the range easily. Uh, I'm going to try to get out this week if I can. So there might be some more range tests coming up, but there's going to be a little bit of a delay on them. Just a, a heads up. But I still got plenty of videos out there for you to check out on the channel. And uh, again, I think we'll be looking at doing a, a 7,000 sub giveaway. And I think that's it. So maybe I'll pick up a couple of those uh, real avid gun tools and maybe throw some of those in the mail for some viewers. So we can do that. But anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. I want you guys all to have a great morning. Have a great weekend. Uh, get some breakfast and then go back to bed and wake up in a couple hours. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for checking it out. This has been Caliber Corner, number 33, Range Box Essentials, and our favorite Range Day accessories. So I think that's it. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good weekend. All right, goodbye. Bye, Felicia. Adios, Felicia. Bye, Alicia. Adios, Felicia. Felicia. She's, she, I don't really know. I don't know. No, I don't know if anybody really knows. There might have been a Felicia at one time. I think it popped up in a chat many moons ago where somebody said goodbye She's to Night a Felicia. Strikes. She's Night Strikes Baby Mama. Night Strikes Baby Mama is Felicia. Okay. I did not realize that. So He says, he says goodbye to her every every show. Does, uh, does not Strike know about this? Probably not, but I oh, mean, he'll, okay. yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, we'll talk to you guys later. All right. Take care. Peace. <laughs>